Yes. Good gonk. Good. We are back. We're back. With Badonka Gonk. I've been waiting here for a week. No, you haven't. Yeah, huh? You were, I was here last week. So last week, Aaron had to cancel, and here we are. Gonk, is he telling the truth? Huh? I don't think so. See, he can't lie. He says nothing. Ah, no lying! <laughs> we're back. Sorry, everybody. I wasn't feeling See? I wasn't feeling the best last time, Gonk. And unfortunately, we had uh, the ability to just do it the next week. Sure. So that was good. You're just trying to postpone so you could finish Survivor Story stuff, huh? <sighs> well. That's what happened. So, guys, today. Hey, you know, it kind of works out. <laughs> we have some stuff we're going to be talking about. We're going to yeah. be talking about Bad Batch here first. Um, and we're going to take some questions from you guys. If you guys have any questions or thoughts you want us to discuss about Bad Batch. But that just came back. Yes. Uh, now, we- also, remember, we haven't seen the trailer everybody wanted us to watch. Yes. So don't ask any questions about anything in that trailer, I yes. guess. Is the- don't do that. <laughs> yeah. That and our mods bad. will help us with moderating that. But Yeah. Only things that have been in the episodes is the safest thing to do. And there's yeah. speculation regarding that. Yeah. But not what you've seen in the trailers. Yes, please. Um, but we want to talk about Bad Batch. We did see a trailer at Celebration, and I think it mostly covered... For the most part, I think things we've seen now. There's a couple things that I remember that we haven't seen yet, but they weren't like I, huge. I usually remember trailers more, and yeah. I don't. I don't remember much of that. That one. I think had I was a so lot. enraptured, just like, oh, this yeah. is so fun. <laughs> that one had a lot of like the like the like the tentacle monster over water. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. but we saw that. And we saw that. But you know, I remember that. I remember oh. that being like a main feature. Yeah, I guess of that celebration trailer. So we're but we're gonna talk about Bad Batch Bad here Batch. Uh, first. We're gonna also then get into the Catalyst book, a Rogue One novel. Which uh, we've read over the last month and mm-hmm. uh, has some uh, interesting uh, stuff in it. Yes, I think. it does. So, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, we are going to wrap up talking about what Eric had to do yesterday, which uh-huh. was finishing up Jedi Survivor. And I've and Aaron finally gets to talk about it. Hopefully, remember things that happened because <laughs> I played it back in like what April or May. Sure, yeah. So it's been a while for me. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, we get to actually talk about some Jedi Survivor and a Cal deep Kestis conversation and, about it. I all haven't that. done like a hundred percent of everything yet. I still have like some rumors and stuff, but all the big stuff I'm there for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll and just the try bounty the hunting. Ball. The bounty hunting. Bounty yes, hunting sir. was good. That was awesome. It was fun. Some <laughs> well, good I stuff can't there. wait to talk about it. So those will all have spoilers within that, as far as everything that's been out and we're going on. So mm-hmm. uh, we just when we talk about trailer stuff for Bad Batch, but yeah, everything else for Bad Batch should be fine. Absolutely. So, I I, I kind of wanted to kick off the Bad Batch thing. Can yeah. I kick it off? Um, I guess so. Go ahead. So this is a thing that I, I've I've noticed, but I definitely saw someone on Twitter talking about it more too. I don't like have necessarily any theories, but have you noticed that Hemlock has one glove on one hand, and he's often like caressing it. Mm-hmm. Like this is the gloved hand. He's often like almost self soothing himself. Um, right? I I. Th- Thought about it a little yeah. bit on. Uh, I, I've been kind of going through Bad Batch with the kids. Uh-huh. We're, we're behind a lot. Yeah, so, sure. So uh, we're doing season two, and the first time he showed up, mm-hmm. we just watched that recently, and he does that. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder why he's rubbing what his hand. Th- yeah, what do you think that is? Is that just a, a um, nervous tick that he has? I'll tell or? you what it is, Eric. Zillow Beast hand. He has a Zillow Beast hand? Yeah. Now, is it the Zillow Beast's face? No. He takes that no, off. No. no, it's not okay. that. It's just like it's got some Zillow Beast DNA in What's- his hand. So, so he's gonna be able to like grab lightsabers and stuff, you know? Okay, that'd be sweet. In the Bad Batch, he'll grab lightsabers. What? I guess he could do the. You know, Darth <laughs> Vader did that thing. I know he know? did that thing. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. that. He could just, and it's like really strong. He can like choke you. Okay, so I don't that's know. what it is. What do you think? Robot hand? What do you think? Like maybe I was thinking robot. Maybe hand he like misses. Like it doesn't feel the same. You know, like could it the just phantom. be cloned? A cloned hand? I don't know. He does clone stuff. Uh, and maybe you lose a hand, and what do you do? That we can clone it. It's like, but I, I've, I'm missing that hand. It's like, we'll just take this hand, reverse it, clone it. Yeah, but then your thumbs backwards and stuff. That might be kind of cool. I would like thumbs on both. I mean, sides. honestly, yeah. General Grievous has that because yeah. he has, you know, the the three fingered hands when it splits. Yeah, he does. No, I would. I mean, thumbs on both hands, it's both really sides the, of your hand would be great. It's really the only thing from Grievous I want. And you you would like really have hold of stuff, you know? Like if you were holding a stick. Hell yeah, dude. Right? Like imagine I'd never drop that a stick. thumb crossing over here too. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You'd never drop that stick. Well, whenever you like do like uh self defense and stuff, mm-hmm. like you're always taught to like the way to roll is the thumb is usually one of the weaker yeah. things. So you're mm-hmm. using that for it. But if you have it on both sides and there's two of them, oh mm-hmm. man, you're screwed. Yeah. So that's why what it is. We so just that, can't see it, but he he's a six fingered man. 
You know, and Yegamon Toyo is going to be mad. We can see it. <laughs> Damn. It's a, it fits like a glove. Maybe one splits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. But, no, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if chat has any. Well, well, Nexus says Dino DNA. See, it's cloning. I I hope. So having that Zillow show up last time, I'm yeah. really hoping something more comes from that. Yeah. Of it because they brought him back. Like there's stuff happening. Yeah. But maybe it's just like, hey, there is cloning going on. But I want to see what they do with it. Like, where's his, you know, hard shell armor stuff? Like, where's that going? What's he putting it in? I don't know. Besides Hemlock's hand. Yeah. I mean, it could just be like. I don't know. It could be a lot of things. Yeah. You could be creating Sith war beasts. Oh, that would be cool. Like the old, uh, what are they called? The Teuton. Tech. Damn it. There's a T word. Yeah. I remember them from like yeah, Switch Wars Code Tour. Attempt to finish it. You don't remember either. You're kidding me. Tacuna? I don't know what they're called. I can't remember. Tacuna. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it at all. I don't remember what it is either, but that was a Sith war beast. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, I think that I've bought some time, and we might have some more. Some questions and stuff? Questions. So we are going to take questions yeah. from uh, people here mm -hmm. over on uh, from Gonk here. For Bad Batch. And stuff. Probably some things maybe from Twitch and or YouTube. So you should be able to see a, a question section either in either spot, and you can submit stuff that way. So let's see what we have. Um, Mr. Awesome, did you guys notice that when Hunter and Wrecker first land on the tentacle monster planet, mm -hmm. Wrecker states that it smells like a rancid Jotas, uh -huh. uh, which was an enemy from Jedi Fallen Order? I didn't at the time, mm. but it was something that came up later that I was like, oh, that is a Jotas. Okay. Mm. Yeah. No, I did not pick up what he said. Mm hmm. So I missed that, but that's really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, that's uh, not a creature I think that we've seen anywhere else, is it? I don't believe so. Maybe maybe comics, but we haven't gotten into comics. So that's true. Um, Skywalker's Academy mm -hmm. has a question saying, "Do you think that Pabu becomes Scarif?" Oh, uh, it is very watery. Uh, yeah, tropical. Yeah, sure. Um, hmm. I don't think the island's big enough for the main island area that they have. But well, I don't no, know what the be, rest of the world yeah. looks like. But, like, they find it from the Bad Batch, and then, like, what the Empire does, yeah. they turn it into what they want. Sure. It's remote, so okay. maybe you can hide the construction of things there. Or... So do you think that, like, they come in, they occupy, and they're like, you know what? You know what sucks? The name Pabu. <laughs> Let's change it. What? Scarif. What'd you say? Scarif? That's it. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I mean... There's been sillier things changing their names. Yeah, I don't know, know the history of Scarif in terms because it has an energy shield. Like it a, does like have a an energy super shield that big they build one. around it. So like, I don't know how long it takes or how the history of it that I, is. I'll tell you what, it, it probably takes less time to make that than it does a Death Star. More of that later. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting idea, but um, I don't know. I'm gonna say no. Okay, is my thought. You are gonna shoot down their question like that? I am Skywalker. Not even gonna say maybe. Nope. All right. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see Fabuccino says since uh -huh. Palpatine can use the force in Rise of Skywalker yep. do you think the M count transfer will be successful I uh, do yes at some point it's gotta I mean successful is a loose term like I think it works but when it comes to cloning and force users they don't mix super well so I think it like it works but also your clone body is all like up on it's you know puppet strength. Been a while since I've seen it, but I'm quite sure Snoke used the Force, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah, he, like he shoots down the floor and the lightning reflects off of it and hits Ray. Like cool moment. He's he has the Force, so I'm gonna say it yeah. works. Oh yeah, he's somehow. super strong. Yeah, like I I legitimately feel Didn't he, that. Like, pull her towards him. Oh yeah, like there's oh, yeah yeah. So I'm gonna say yes that mm -hmm. it is successful. It's just a matter of. Uh, I think what they're looking at is the idea, and in Legends now, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, shoot, Unleashed, yep. like, there's stuff that kind of worked with that where like the cloning of Force users, like it mm -hmm. isn't 100% the same, and it changes yep. and does stuff. And I think Palpatine's trying to like fix those yep. little like kinks in the and system. That goes back to Timothy Zahn, heir of the Empire. Joris oh. Kaboth and Luke, Luke are both kind of mad clones. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's that issue that I think he needs to fix so mm -hmm. that he can like more accurately yeah. make himself. But yeah, I figure there's some kind of success they have, but I think it's going to be tiers of su sure. success. But 
How do you feel about their use of the phrase M count? Do you think that they're just trying to avoid They don't want to say midichlorians? That way people aren't like, midichlorian, what's that? And they go to Google and they see all of the just hate rhetoric that George Lucas got from the prequel era that mm. forced him to retire because it was so bad. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure they do that with like uh, white blood cells and stuff, don't they? Like yeah. they have different like terminologies in the medical do field they? for like, rather than saying like, here's the full name, yeah. we're going to call it your whatever count and stuff like that. It's just, to me, it's interesting to not use a word that would effectively mean the same thing that's been in a movie that would tie that in, you know? Sure. But I, I just wonder if they're trying to get rid of a negative connotation when it comes to saying midichlorian versus just M count. I think it's more of a medical connection. Yeah? I think. Because, okay. like, there's things that are shortened in the medical field. Hell, doctors writing prescriptions and all their names and everything, like, yeah. they shorten that stuff out because they got to do it all the time. I, mean, I can't tell. And it you makes it faster. Re- you can't read what they say. I know, but that's why. Because, like, it's not like, well, I'm buying a house, so I need to make sure this looks good. It's like, I'm tired of having to write my name all day, and they do so. it real short. But, um... I don't think doctors write any more than I do, and I don't write like that. Yeah, but do you write your name all the time? Yeah. Like, all the time? Yeah, I just like my name. No, you not Yeah, I put hearts around How many it. times you wrote your name today? I love myself. <laughs> I love just hearts <laughs> I would have done it once, but we didn't sign that form. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I think it's just a medical thing. Okay. If I had Melanie here, I'd use her to... Mm. Uh, push my idea okay. as well. Well, I'm okay. going to uh, just ignore her medical experience and just go with my conspiracy theory. She worked in the ER. You got to be quick, get stuff done, people That's dying. True. Yep. You know? Well, it's tricky. It's true. Um, Let's go to the next question. Let's do it. Uh, let's see. We have... Um, what's my name is Matt say here? Uh, do you think the bodies of dead Jedi could be on Tantus. Mm. That could explain why the Inquisitors have a bunch of frozen Jedi corpses, possibly for experimentation. From the Obi-Wan show. We, we did see... Master Sube. Yeah, and a lot Sube. of other... My bad. Yeah. A lot of other Jedi mm-hmm. in there as well. Yeah. I mean, we also... Um, why wouldn't that happen? I mean, in course. Rebels, we saw uh, Master... Uh, what was it? Luminara? Mm-hmm. Right? Her body Unduly. was still being held. Sure. So, it's... It seems that there's some reason to keep a hold of these Jedi bodies, right? Yeah. That one was more to attract people, like other Jedi, for like as, as a trap. I mean, but... they have to have midichlorians to transfer to mm-hmm. the M count, right? I don't know if they just have midichlorians just anywhere. What if M count right. doesn't stand for midichlorians? What would it stand for? Manon? Master. Master <laughs> I don't, count? I don't know. It yeah. has to be. The M-count. master count. No. It's ridiculous if it's anything but midichlorian sure which is why i posed the question at all <laughs> <laughs> um but no i mean it would be interesting to see that like what they're really working on those are all pods that are holding jedi or other resources that they use maybe yeah. but inside is the actual like related to palpatine maybe the what necro- would... part, project necromancer is like main thing because would... they didn't open yeah. all those other pods no. they just opened that middle one yeah what would be the, like, we get in there, we open those pods, what would be the most disappointing thing in that pod for you? Disappointing yeah. thing? Damn, what would be disappointing? Hmm. Um, they were trying to clone Wookiees and they've made Ewoks. <laughs> 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 I don't yeah. know. I don't know what would be a disappointing thing. I know some people, but I wouldn't, but, yeah. like, I know some people would be like, if, like, it's Jar Jar. <laughs> What was the know, name the Dark of, Jar Jar uh, thing, and he's just cloned throughout all that. What was the name of the guy? Clovis. What was Cl- they, I'm bringing back Clovis. He was useful in the banking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, bring back Clovis. Just to bother Vader. <laughs> I guess, yeah. That would be something uh, like not connected at all to any of that. I was yeah. like, why the heck do you have these That'd things? But I don't really have any good, like, this mm. is a real disappointment. Yeah. Because most things I'm thinking of are all like, that'd be cool. They're all filled with Imbo, you know? Like, oh, that'd, that'd be, be cool, sweet. Yeah. I'm not disappointed yeah, at I all. I can't even think of anything that I'd be disappointed <clears throat> by. They're all a bunch of, like, remember Constantine and Rebels? I was always just screwing up. Yeah. It's all It's him. a bunch of Constantines. But, like, why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> like, that's why, like, with mine, I'm like, well, this, the background of how we got Ewoks, yeah. they, they were trying to clone Wookiees, and they yeah. couldn't, so they just Cut made a bunch of Ewoks, yeah, and they sure. just said, like, you know what, screw it. Throw them yeah. all on this random moon. <laughs> yep, and then that's why they made the Death Star over there too, because that's just one of their moons they have. My dog Obi. Uh, whenever my wife gets home and she gets in the shower, 
she puts on Star Wars for him. It's become like a routine every day because mm-hmm. he loves to bark at aliens, but he loves Ewoks. Yeah? Yeah. Probably any of the furry aliens. Well, it's because he, he, loves, right? he, loves, he loves animals and he loves kids. What do you think like, of Wampus or uh, or Tauntauns even? Anything he'll bark at. Okay. Yeah. And it's really the only time you actually hear him bark. Tauntauns are horse-like, right? Yeah. Kind of? Kind of, yeah. But no, I mean, if anything just has the feeling of an animal. I mean, he'll bark at CG animals. He'll bark at cartoon animals. Okay. He'll bark at fake animals. He'll, bite, he'll bark at Spider-Man crawling around. Yeah, he does do that. <laughs> Spider-Man's fine, but when Spider-Man like gets down, he's like, "Wow, what's he doing?" He'll freak out. <laughs> he's not walking like a human. Yeah. Um, Clone twelve oh nine says, "How long do you think Hemlock has been working for Palpatine?" Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't seem like. I, I would assume that it's been. Do you think that it's been since the Empire formed? Or do you think it's before? I would. The, the more you dig into Palpatine, the more you realize, like, oh, he's been planning this stuff for yeah. a while. I was, I was going to say before you said that, like, I would say recently. Yeah. However, <laughs> yeah. Uh, some different thoughts in my head now make me think more that it could have been happening during the Clone Wars. Sure. But it has to be. Because, like, how far are we from the Clone Wars now with the Bad Batch? Like, Bad Batch hasn't gone too far. Mm-hmm. And he must have been working before that right yeah. like i don't feel like the base on tantus is super new mm-hmm. it, i think he's been there for a bit doing research and maybe other places too because we had that old base that they went to in sure. episode two and that was hemlock's base right yeah um so for how long i don't know i need to figure out how old hemlock is well i want to say a clone? Like, i want to that's what i say i was gonna <laughs> say like well maybe he's in his 30s i would say or he's way older and the original hemlock is his hand and he's he's fighting over it. The rest he's of trying it. to stop it from like taking idle over. hand. <laughs> Maybe that'd be uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. The real question uh, is, how much longer will he serve him for? Will Hemlock sure. make it out of the Bad Batch and continue on to materials that are surrounding Project Necromancer? I want to say no. Yeah, but that's only because I've never seen him anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a very unique character. I love how soft spoken he is. He's like the only non-British imperial, but he's still kind of threatening, right? But he's extremely. It's threatening. It's like uh, Alan Rickman. Yeah, you know, like he can just talk so softly and still be so threatening. He can command an entire classroom of wizards <laughs> by speaking like this. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Mm. All right. Um, mm. how about Sethi Fifty? Okay. Uh, do you think Crosshair knows that Tech died, or do you think he'll find out in the next episode? Yeah, I don't think he knows yet. I don't believe so. I was thinking about that because I, I was talking to M- Melanie, maybe mm-hmm. I forget, and uh, something about that came up, and I'm like, I don't think he knows. I don't know when he would have found out exactly. I don't remember last season him learning anything about it. Not that I can recall. I mean, unless we're missing something. Yeah, and there's been lots of conversations I imagine with Crosshair and Omega over mm-hmm. the however many. A hundred, yeah. hundreds of days that they were in the in the facility, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna say no, and that sure. might be a thing that we confront in the next episode—a mixture of that and yeah. also, you know, Hunter and Wrecker are gonna have to like confront the things of Crosshair. But yeah. I also think the last time that they really saw each other, they were willing to take him with them. Yep, and then he stayed, and he hasn't chased after him and tried to kill him more since then, oh, right? Yeah. So I mean. So far, Crosshair has been very lonely and it comes to a lot of his trauma and the way he processes things. And I imagine that he's going to try to keep doing that by himself, but I hope that it's his brothers see that and like try to help him. Hmm. So hopefully that's what happens. Yeah. And they have Omega, who also, like, like he, he called trying to warn mm-hmm. when he found out Omega was a big part of it, right? Yeah. Uh, and then Omega and him worked together to get out of there, and Omega hasn't given up on him. Yeah. And they... They care about Omega, you sure. know? They were looking across the galaxy five times to find yeah. her. So I think that we'll get him brought back into the team, and there may be some stuff with that. But I want to, I wonder and want to see how he will deal with the tech thing. Like, yeah. will he – I imagine he'll care, but at one point I feel like he was willing to kill them, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't know. It'll be an interesting uh, – It will be. Uh, I don't know, emotion or mood from him that – I, I'm curious to see what he does. Yeah, me too. But I think D. Bradley Baker will do great with it. He does great with everything. He's so good. <sighs> We're so lucky to have him. <sighs> yes, yes, we are. Um, you know, it's. <laughs> we'll talk about this later too, but it's one of those things where it's like 
if you don't get D. Bradley Baker, it just means you're getting Tamira Morrison. And mm. I love Tamira Morrison. Mm. But anytime I don't get Tamira Morrison, I'm not necessarily disappointed because I get D. Bradley Baker. Yeah. It, it, it's like, you know, Matt Lanner and, and Hayden. It's like, oh, they're I both prefer, great. Do I prefer one? Sure. But one's been with me a lot longer. Mm-hmm. But I love them both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gordo says, if you bet on someone dying and surviving, who do you bet on? So if you pick one that you think will survive and one you think that will die out of just out of the series of Bad Batch? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I can't bet on any clone other than Rex making it. Sure. I will bet on Nala Say dying. Okay. Yeah. I think that will happen. Yeah. Uh, what about like Sid? Sid is a you know the Trandoshan Cantina owner that betrayed us. Mm. You know that we still haven't addressed that either. I, I can see her not making it. Don't even want to see her again. You don't want to see her. No. No revenge. No. No revenge. Okay. It's not the bad batch way. I don't think. It's, and she's well, not important enough to take revenge on. Yeah. Screw her. Okay. She burned our bridges and we can't cross them. Okay. <laughs> or something. <laughs> So in the screw Mary kill with Sid, just screw her. Screw her. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think Omega makes it out. I was gonna say Omega too. Yeah. Uh, just because like they've brought her in, mm-hmm. and I feel like there's more story to tell with her. And there's a large amount of places that she could pop up again at mm. an older age, especially yeah. because she's not an uh, advanced age clone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Her and Boba both can like mm-hmm. yeah. survive and be. Just get Daniel much Logan later. to come in and play her. Well, it's clone. yeah, but I don't. I think there's a difference that we might need to use so. use someone else. I think that I don't guy know is, who I, that kid, he, that guy, that man is ready at the at the phone for them to pick up. Hey, we need. Hey, you want to be in Star Wars? Yeah, okay. And he comes in like dressed like Boba, and they're like, no. Oh, sorry. Uh, someone should have told you. Just give him a, a <laughs> bow and arrow. He's like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> but I think like there's a lot of uh, potential with her character uh-huh. and. You know, there's all the questions that we have of, like, why her M-count transfer, yep. like, worked or whatnot, it is, right? It is weird why yeah. that happens. Why hers out of all the other clones. Yeah. Like, what all is different about her? And mm-hmm. we talked before about Omega and why her, uh, like, in the first season, we got feelings of, like, her kind of picking up, like, what Tech can do really easily mm-hmm. and kind of what Hunter feels and being a really good shot, having never really yep. shot before, which, you know, it's like a crosshair thing. So like, She seems to be, like, intuitive with a lot of the skills they had. Yeah, and, like, what is the reason for that? And mm-hmm. I, I think there's story that we want to get to with that. And I don't know if that will only be visit in Bad Batch. Yeah. I'd be – honestly, I'm looking forward to an idea of, like, some more – like, how we've had Mandalorian and Ahsoka and all that. Like, we had mm-hmm. Kenobi, mm-hmm. and we've had Andor, but, like, I'd like to see a little bit more kind of in that middle ground, you know, of, like, between episodes three and four yeah. of, like, live-action stories that we get like that. Okay. Bringing like, I'd love to bring Glover back in and have him do some Lando stuff, or yeah, that would be cool. You know, just whatever it is, and like yeah. we could have him. Maybe not even like a a, a show for him, mm-hmm. but like you have a you have a series going on, and he shows up in one of them, just like yeah. in Rebels. You know, having Lando show up, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, use that. You know, we generally try to just stay away from news as much as possible. I mean, stuff gets to us, but I don't. It, I haven't heard anything about the Lando series that was announced long, long, long ago. Along with Rangers of the New Republic mm. and <laughs> Celebration didn't talk about no, it at all or yeah. anything, you know. A lot of it's really been focused, I think, on uh, like after Episode Six time yeah. frame, and then kind of pushing forward into you know the new New Order movie. Sure. The only thing that's further back is the one that's way back. Yeah, you're right. You ain't getting Lando in there. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd like to see some more in between Episodes Three and Six, but also I don't know. Okay. Between Six and Seven would be good yeah. too, but we've gotten. A good bit of that. Yeah. And they've connected the tissue, right? Yeah. Like, we've had stuff with Grogu being experimented on and mm-hmm. doing M-count transfers and stuff with them and whatnot, and then yeah. Project Necromancy. And so, like, there's been a little bit of a through line, and Palpatine definitely will take a long time to work on projects. So, I don't know. I just want to see. I want to see more, and I want them to I want them to utilize characters like, uh, what's his name? Elric? Alden? Alden? Alden Ehrenreich. Aaron Wright. Wow, yeah. I don't know why I say Elric. Uh, oh. Alden, uh, like, they used him in Solo. They had Kira, mm-hmm. like, before they end up kind of, like, you know, using Luke, Leia, and Han. Yeah. Like, well, you can't really use them now. Back here, like, use these characters. That Trust me, I would love that. But 
there's <clears throat> it seems to me like Disney took the wrong lesson at the failure of Solo. It wasn't their piss poor marketing. It was no, it's just no one wants that. No one wants that <clears throat> apparently. It's like okay, <laughs> I love Solo. Yeah, when Make I rewatched Solo it, Two happen. When I rewatched it with the kids, like I was like, this is a fun. It's movie. It's a fun movie. I like this yeah. movie a lot. Me too. And Alden has just a nice like charisma about he him. He really does. So I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a very funny movie. Um Beckett. He's so what he Harrelson is so funny in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um move on. Uh Irish Girl? Nexus has a question. Irish Nexus. Uh he says with the Bad Batch being a story about all of clone kind and with Daniel Logan doing the clone recently, do you think we get Boba in season three? I think it's only natural, <laughs> honestly. I, dude, you need Boba and Omega to meet. That'd be so cool. That's what I think is natural. I guess. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right. I mean, of the clones of Django, they're they're pretty. You know, they're pretty close. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I, I would want to see Boba. I there. would love that. I'd love him to be with the Bad Batch for a little bit. You think he? has like a closer set of armor to the Boba we know in the original trilogy? Hmm. I don't know. Would it still be? I mean, he would have the helmet notch from Cad Bane yeah. at that point, right? I mean, yeah, he should. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I guess so. He'd be roughly Omega's age, right? He'd be exactly Omega's age. Cause it, were they yeah. both at the exact same time? The exact same time, and they aged age at the exact same rate so he's not gonna be much bigger the armor might be too big maybe i don't know but it'd be cool to see maybe kind of like a version of that while yeah. he's still i mean I, I i'd love to see him come back in with his whatever the ship's called now it's slave, slave one, one. <laughs> <laughs> boba fett ship yeah the like, fire spray as they called it in book of boba it's a fire spray yeah yeah like I'd love to see him come in with that, and yeah. I don't know, work something with the clones. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's maybe him and Omega have to go on an adventure together. That'd be cool. I would love that. Yeah. Maybe if the Bad Batch don't make it, that's where she. Ah oh, man. I don't know. They all get, I mean that's that's her brother too. They all get stuck in the vault. <sighs> I don't know, but no, I'd love to see Boba. I think that'd be great. And having Daniel Logan already being a voice, like, yep. I, why not? Why not have him? Yep. I, I w still want them to use him more. That's another one that yeah. I think that they should use in between episodes yeah. three and four is having Daniel Logan in there yeah. and having Alden in there and Lando. Like, there's that whole, like, idea of a uh, scum and villainy kind of uh, mm -hmm. trilogy, right? Yeah. There's Darth Maul. Like, Ray Park isn't getting younger, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, he's not. Use, use that man. Get uh, him and Sam Witwer doing some stuff. I want to see more of that story. Like, what, yeah. where were they going with it? And let's capitalize on some of that before yeah. before it's too late and people are too old to really reprise that same role. True. I know there's some comic stuff that gets close to what we're talking about there, but we'll get to that eventually. Yeah. Um, you can always do animation with it, too. Yeah, but you definitely could. I still Which, love I mean, why not do more animation? Do you see how beautiful it is? It's Bad so Batch amazing. Bad Batch looks really good. Uh, one thing I wanted to say re real quick before I move on. Remember, Daniel Logan did one clone, but someone else did the other two clones? Man, you always talk about this guy. <laughs> this guy? Right? Are you talking about... Oh, no, you mean in, in Bad Batch. Yeah. I thought you were bringing up the, no, no, the no. second guy that no. was the clone <laughs> from episode two. No. I'm talking about the voice actor that played the other two clones is the kid from Deadpool, the Firestarter kid. That's who played him. With the prison pocket? Yeah. Okay. That's him. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. But he played the other two clones. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing, too, is I wonder why they did that and didn't have Daniel do all three. Because I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, well, you know, Daniel's not necessarily the most seasoned actor, so maybe they don't have him do a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know. Maybe, but... He did all of the clones in a couple arcs of the Clone Wars, and there was a criticism of, like, man, he doesn't do what... To, what uh, D does? D does, in terms of, like, you know, so I don't know. I don't know either, I guess. <sighs> but then why have him be any of them? Because. Okay. <laughs> now that we've you solved that. <laughs> that's an easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what Dave Filoni said. Because. Because. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, guys, don't forget, if you want to do anything over on the Twitch side, uh, you can use your channel points in the bottom corner because mm -hmm. we have more on YouTube than we do Twitch, so don't forget that you can do the, the Twitch side of things yeah. too. Um, we have... Uh, Carl Krauss, who says, do you think Emery would want to help the Bad Batch behind Hemlock's back? 
I Emery is such a question for me. Yeah, because of also being like I'm your sister kind of thing, right? Like, what's I want to know what her story is, where she came from. Do you think Emery has a chip? Hmm. Like Omega doesn't have a chip. Sure. Boba doesn't have a chip. Does Emery have a chip? I'm gonna say no. Okay. Because for whatever she was made for was different. And mm-hmm. the, the chip side of things was made so that we could turn these soldiers against their commanders. Yeah. Which isn't what we would need for, like, Omega or Emery or something like that, right? I wouldn't think so, but so. I just don't know. I mean, the chip didn't factor in until, like, one moment. Really, you know? And that sure. moment's passed. Yeah. I mean, it also caused some problems in Clone Wars during it that does. one arc. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think no. Okay. But I also am curious on, you know, we, we know where where and not necessarily, necessarily why, but like kind of why Omega is around, right? Mm-hmm. That has to do with uh, Nala Se, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Why Zimri around? Is that still also because of Nala Se? And was there other things she was working on? Yeah. Or is it because of uh, Hemlock? Was Hemlock doing it and made these clones? Or like what? where does, what's her I... origin and why is she... You know what I mean? I mean, the only thing I can think of is just, well, you do that so that you don't have to bring outsiders in. Sure. But they already do because most of the stormtroopers are outsiders. Yeah. So I don't know. Outside. You know what I mean? Sure. So I don't know. A big question mark with Emery. I'm yeah. not sure. We have a lot of we have a lot of episodes this season. There's still like 20-some episodes in there. Oh, is there? Yeah, it's still Dang. a lot. I was so worried there was it was going to be like 12. Yeah, I saw some people like complaining about the pace. Oh, everything's going so quick. They're already back with them. We got so many episodes to go through. I'm like, isn't that exciting? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure. excited by having all that real estate to do yeah, more stuff. Yeah, I feel like we have a lot of story that we need to yeah. tell in this last season. So, yeah. good. So, yeah, um, uh, Emery's a big question mark. I, even my speculation is not really. I feel like anything. Emery was willing to help Omega mm-hmm. and has some feelings towards her and wanting to help her. But she wants her to help, <clears throat> but it wasn't the enough. Rules. It wasn't enough to yeah let her escape. Yeah. But she was willing to give her back her doll. Yeah, right. So yeah. maybe yeah, yeah, I think so. I just don't know in what ways, and it might be a thing where she needs to be pushed further by Hemlock in some way or form, right? Yeah. Where uh, wasn't it? Was it her who was like, "But they'll kill them." Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, they should have thought of that. You know, should like have thought of that. Yeah, like. There, it seemed like a point where it's like that feels too far. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So I think Emery, if things get too far for her, she will stop it and try to change it. And might not survive. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's the case with like everybody, right? Yeah. Pretty much anyone who's a clone. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, how about uh, ba- about Bailey? Bailey Silver? Hey, boys, I've got a question I've always thought about. Why okay. is... No, Maul... We're not talking about Maul. This is Bad Batch Bailey. Okay, just make it a. I'll, you want to talk about Maul? Answer as just because you want to talk about Maul, Eric. As quick right. as I can, I'll answer. Why Go. is Maul the only red knight brother? All the others are yellow or dark yellow. Uh, there's a like slightly orange as well. Um, maybe there that, is orange. Maybe that's why Talzin selects him. like I like the red one. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, you don't want characters that look that way to just feel like copies, even though a lot of people like. We're saying that at the time when those episodes were coming out. It's like, just a bunch of malls, you know? I mean, that's what Savage Press is. He's in a pr- replacement for something people liked. And then George is like, just bring back Maul. Like, what? Well, we already set up Savage. Like, have them both. All right. You know? Um, yeah, I-, I guess that's the answer. All right. And but yeah, I think there's there's more colors than just yellow. There's definitely an orange. There's darker yellows. There's, But I don't know why he's the only red. Is... Maul normally all red without tattoos, or is he normally a different color and those are all tattoos? Maybe he's so angry he turned red. Maybe. That happens to me. Also, any other emotion. It's true. Um, Warden, I like this one. Do yeah. you think that Scorch has a bigger role in Bad Batch or in future projects? He has a long history. He does. Definitely. The the squad. Um, So far, I've really disliked him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he- he isn't. I mean, he's just following orders, man. I guess so, sure. Uh, I Do I hope? Is that what the question was? Um, do, do you think, think that do Scorch think? will have a bigger... I don't know about think. In terms of hope, my hope is yes, that way we can finally maybe get a Republic Commando 2. <laughs> I think... And have Delta Squad 
have finished their story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even just getting a Republic Commando, like yeah. if it works within the canon. Like, sure, is there anything yeah. about Republic Commando that wouldn't work within? Because I've never played the first Not one. Not necessarily. I mean, some of the des- it, it's kind of like when you're looking at, like, Force Unleashed, right? It's not canon. But if it was, we would have to uh, really funnel in our brains about how powerful Galen, or not Galen, uh, Merrick? Star- yeah. Is it Galen? Galen Merrick? Is it Galen Merrick? This yeah. sounds right. Starkiller, how powerful he actually is in a canon versus a video game that's designed to just make you feel powerful, right? So there are certain things in Republic Commando that's like, well, the Geonosians don't quite look like that, <laughs> you know? Uh, or at least certain versions of them. So you'd have to, like, massage a little bit, but not yeah. as much as something like Force Unleashed. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, his inclusion, I think, is cool for, like, fan service sake, mm-hmm. right? Because you could just have, like, someone there. But the fact that it's Scorch, like, oh, that's cool because I remember him from this this game. Yeah. But he also showed up a little bit in Clone Wars, right? There was that one, that one moment mm-hmm. for the, uh, for the I think it was for the Jedi, wasn't it? Is that what it was? It was like a funeral. It was someone who had died. I want to say it was a dead Jedi. But I, I think so. I can't remember in this moment. Yeah. I'm not but remembering either. In that in that segment there, like, it'd be cool to just have – more story with them within yeah. the canon of everything. Yeah. Um, little root says, "Remember the Zepho type thing from last season? Mm-hmm. Do you think that will come back in any way, shape, or form?" I don't think <clears throat> so. I think, and honestly, I think it's better if that is just a mystery of the galaxy that we, some of us, think we have an answer, but many people are like, "What was that?" And I think the most satisfying answer is, "I don't know." Sure. Like right now. There's a mystery in the galaxy of why is the the father, why is there a statue yeah. on that planet? Yeah. Why is that there? Why is it there? And what's it pointing at? That's so exciting. You know? Yeah. I, mean, I want to know what that is. And hopefully we find out. The Witches of Dathomir or Galactic Interlopers. Like, that's cool. Mm. You know? There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Yeah. So it, it's fun to have little mysteries and stuff, which uh, apparently there's like a hundred wonders in the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Um, RSR says, who's your favorite Bad Batch? Who's your favorite of the Bad Batch? Ah, uh, I can't say Gonky. What? Uh, I think someone would be a little jealous. Um, it's hard to answer. Uh, I mean, I, I really like Wrecker. Obviously, I mean, he's, he's a funny character, but I like whenever they can play with his fear of heights and how he can be adorable and destructive at the same time. Sure. Uh, but, man, there's, I don't know, I can't, I it's don't know. hard, right? It's really hard Um now. They've done so well with all of them. Crosshair uh, is so good Crosshair now. is probably one of my favorites because uh, just the, one, I love that they used him for kind of showing the Imperial side yeah. of everything going on, which I mm-hmm. thought was great. Um, but also, he just, he feels so much more complicated now he after does. last season. Um, whereas before I'm like, oh, they're just going to use him on this side, but yeah. he's seeing all the bad stuff going on and yeah. he's like, I, I, I want to change and get out of this. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I like that a lot. I also have enjoyed what they've done with tech. Yeah. Especially uh, last season. Except for the very end. <laughs> well, yeah. But like even the stuff they were doing to develop him more yeah. in that no. season. Oh, so good. Uh, so good. Him with, uh, shoot. What's the one girl? The Wanda. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, why am I blanking on her name right now, Aaron? I had it written down my notes because I knew I'd forget it. I don't have my notes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could go through and find it, I guess. But, uh, Seek, but, but no. we haven't found her. We haven't seen her we at all this, her season, yet, this season. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Fee. Fee, yeah. Thank you, it's Nexus. Fee. Thank you, Nexus. Um, but like that stuff has been really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Hunter, I don't think, has had in Wrecker as much development, I don't think. Um, they've done yeah. – Wrecker's been – fairly i feel like consistent like he's like a big brother to omega you know what i mean he is he he gets he really gets to have like feel the feelings of the bad batch as a whole i feel like mm-hmm. he gets angry on behalf of everybody he gets sad on behalf of everybody mm-hmm. he's like their emotional signal i feel like hunter um i feel like he's had like the least amount of development mm-hmm. but also because he's in a leader's situation, like he ha- he also has the most responsibility, so it's hard for him to change as he, much as the others. Yeah, he has to stay in that leader role and consistent yeah. and stuff. And he, it's tough. I mean, that's his job is to be consistent. Yeah, you know, so it is a little tough, but he doesn't get a whole lot of 
I don't know, but maybe that's something we'll change this season. I don't maybe. Know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think the one, too, that I like the most, who's had the most development, because we had no idea who they were, is Omega. Yeah. Like, I've really liked what they've done with Omega. Mm-hmm. I've loved her this season. Yeah. Uh, I loved Crosshair and her, like, escaping together. That was so good. And, like, them, like, we talked about during the thing, but, yeah, them both having worked with the Bad Batch, but never really working together, still worked like a team, and yeah. it was, like, flawless. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's, that was great. And, you know, Crosshair just listening to omega mm-hmm. even though he barely has any connection to her as as much as the bad batch the rest yeah. of them do you know yeah definitely so i i think omega is probably my favorite of the group but tech and crosshair have really grown a lot and I done do. a lot more uh i miss echo me too i liked him being on yeah. the team yeah so i hope we get more of him in this season again uh, I think we will. Especially since like we, we have an idea of where Rex goes, mm-hmm. but we you know, we don't know where an Echo goes. We don't know where any and of the batch go. They brought Echo back. <laughs> yeah. And I want to I want to see him more and then get more of an idea of him. Yeah. So Um that might be a good one to end on for talking about Bad Batch because we still have the book and Survivor to talk to and it's yes, already been about forty five minutes. So we have a lot uh, of things to get into. Don't we might have a lot of time to waste. Yeah, so that might be it, guys, for yeah. uh, questions on Bad Batch. And Thank we're only you. four episodes in, so <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll probably, probably get to talk about it again here we'll next, do it next month. Off, yeah. You know? um, but uh, if we get a chance to talk about more questions of any kind, we'll do it at the very end. But yeah. that's always that loose. Uh, hopefully, we get to it because Eric and I tend to talk a lot, a lot of. Uh, a lot of Star Wars. It does. So it does happen. We'll see what happens. But thank you guys so much for all the questions on that. And uh, we'll have to get into the book now. <coughs> what? Did, did it work? Hot damn. I knew I could do it. I've hacked in today so that I can reveal to you the secrets of the latest hint hunt. Uh, tell you the winner of the One Piece live action replacement poll. And also remind you... That another hint hunt is coming this Saturday. It's going to drop on our social medias, and other hint hunters are going to be at discord.gg slash blindwave trying to work it out. So if this seems like something that would be fun to you, or if you want to know what wins a little bit in advance, make sure to check that out. But without further ado, so for this hint hunt on social media was posted a poem written by yours truly. Dare you conspire, devise cruel calculations that my bed be made of fresh earth for my seed, a grave deed spit upon a most sacred creed. Shall you draw color till I lay in ashen flesh and blood unless you count bills, mount sins to account? For I forgive your folly, though your head now rests on my bed. The final scene, E. So, there's a lot going on in that poem, but what exactly is it? Uh, that is important. That's the thing that you need to work out when it comes to the hint hunts because there's a lot of red herrings. So let's take a look at what might draw the eye. So there is some extra spacing around a comma here, and the commas are just kind of placed in not random places, but very strange places grammatically. So that drew the hint hunter's eyes pretty early. You can see them trying to work out some things. Dear Diary, the crazy weirdo man is at it again, for example. I left this page blank for a reason, so they had uh, a place to come up with the final solution. Also, I appreciate that uh, Bing liked my poem. The poetic lines you shared invoke a sense of mystery and foreboding. The imagery of betrayal, forgiveness, and a final scene adds depth to the narrative. Well done. So thanks, Bing. I appreciate that. Also, I can sense Rick laughing and taking screenshots, which I always do as they're going. Uh, They kind of got caught up on trees at first. I am the Archmaster. I speak for the trees because the font was papyrus and it talked about like earth and stuff like that. So they started to go down that rabbit hole for a bit. Uh, But eventually people started postulating Uh, For example, Storm Hover here. This is silly, but are we supposed to actually draw, calculate something on the blank page? Which we will see that turn into fruition. Uh, Not quite correct here, but the right idea because, and I do quite like this meme, uh, but there's a lot of synonyms here. uh, Conspire, calculations, 
uh, for plot. Uh, grave is a type of plot. And, um, and the whole thing here is a plot in and of itself. It's telling a story. Uh, so that's the idea, and that you need to plot something. But what is it exactly that you need to plot? So some people started speculating about the number of words between the commas, and uh, they started to hate the commas, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, but it is indeed something in between the commas that you need to focus on. And in fact, it's synonyms, although um, words will get you close enough, I think, uh, to the actual answer. But I always like finding out new things that I didn't know before. So here, um, this person tried to connect the dots of the commas themselves, which kind of almost gets the shape. Uh, you see Storm Hover here saying some Dipper vibes. But I learned about Macau, which I think is how you pronounce it, a symbol for safe passage over water. So that's something that could maybe appear in another hint hunt. But if you do take the synonyms, or the syllables, sorry, and plot them out, you do get this sort of shape, which if you connect the dots, looks something like this, which looks a lot like the Little Dipper, also known as Ursa Minor, which stands uh, for Little Bear. So that is indeed the winner of this particular hint hunt is the show the bear so it was a lot of fun making it it was a lot of fun watching people trying to solve it as always and we are hot off the presses with another hint hunt that is coming this saturday so i get to do it all over again well i hope you enjoy the reactions to the bear i hope you enjoyed the hint hunt and i think i'll give control back to the guys so thanks and i'll see you later i swear i swear gonk if you don't don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this damn thing. Wait, I think we got it. Do you need that? I think we're back. All right, we were hacked. Do we know what was, what, what hacked us? I don't know. Are we, we took vulnerable? Down the whole thing. We're in hyperspace. The, the How are we hacked? I don't know. The ship, the ship seemed to be okay, but Gonk, Gonk, are you back? Are you good? Are you? I, I'm, I'm gonna use this. I hit. I was hitting him kind of hard. Yeah, I told you not to hit him. I was going to rip He told me. He asked me to. Well, I was about to blow him up, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. All right. Well, I don't know what that was. I hope you enjoyed it, whatever it was. All right. Where were we? I got grease all over my stuff. <laughs> we need to get back to uh, the book. Catalyst. Catalyst. We're back Catalyst. to Catalyst, guys. All right. <clears throat> so, we got to read this past month. Catalyst, a Rogue One story, yep. which I believe came out like a month or two months before Rogue One. Yes, sir. A lot of people read this book and then saw the movie, which I, I think it would work. I think that would have been really yeah, cool, and I kind of wish that I would have maybe. Me too. But I also don't know if I would have felt as connected to the characters having not watched the movie first either. Like, okay. I, think, I think there's a cool... Oh, okay. I understand what you mean. I think yeah. there's a cool aspect to being able to yeah. know Galen or mm -hmm. uh, Lyra. Lyra. Yeah. Lyra. Lyra? I've always said. Lyra, back from the dead. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, she is in the movie not much, right? Not much at all. So, like, uh, first time watching it, like, mm -hmm. I don't have quite the connection to her and Galen yeah. in the very beginning of the movie, you know? But with this book, I feel like there's a lot more there yeah. that adds to what those three's history mm -hmm. is, which is really good and really cool, and I like that a lot. So. Agreed. It, it definitely, I think, would have been really cool to have read this and got a feel for who is Krennic, yeah. who is Galen, who yeah. is Lyra, um, before getting in. And, and a little bit of uh, who Jin is, right? A little tiny bit, yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, the thing that I think I would have benefited from more is just how codependent Galen Merrick, uh, not <laughs> <laughs> Galen Urso is, um, without really knowing it about himself right like he needs Lyra to be around like he needs someone else to fuel because his brain is the pilot right and mm. he himself isn't controlling it sometimes so uh you know there's a part of me that's like oh okay I think that he we, he you would think he's way easier to manipulate right yeah. like Saul Guerrero might see him and be like they got him 
Yeah. And I, you know what? I actually do believe it now. I'm sorry, Jen, but your father is this terrible person. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think he can believe that. Sure. Knowing how codependent Galen actually is. Yeah. From this book. I get what you mean. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, let's get into the book itself. Yes, uh, sir. And talk about this book was in three parts. Yep. And I do want to say the beginning of this book, uh, I think, was the biggest surprise for me. Because I guess I've been under the impression that the Death Star, maybe one, uh-huh. didn't take as long to build as I thought it that it really did. Okay. I thought it was much shorter time frame, maybe. Did you? Like, after the Empire really did. Uh-huh. However, you see it at the end of Episode 3. You do. So then my thought is like, well, because we see in Episode 2 that the Geonosians and Count Dooku get this plans, right? You see, yeah. oh, look at these plans. Dooku's holding the plans they are. for the weapon. All right, well, the Separatists start making this thing, yeah. and then he just takes it over. <laughs> Whenever yeah. he takes over the galaxy and then mm-hmm. continues construction of it, but all that's not real. Nope, <laughs> that's all. That's all just what I had in my head. And now you know the rest of the story. Yeah. <laughs> when this when this went in and was talking about, uh, well, the Naboo crisis eleven years ago was one of the lines it had, and I was like, uh-huh. Naboo crisis eleven years ago. Wait a minute. And I was like, Hang on. When is this? We're so we're st- we're just. It's like a year into the Clone Wars. Uh huh. And they've already been like working and setting up construction and stuff for the Death Star to be made. And I was like, dang, okay. And the, who built it? The Republic. The Republic. <laughs> and I love the reasoning. Mm-hmm. It's like basically like it's it's like Cold War. It's an right? arms race, yeah. It's it's yeah, not even Cold War. Cold War is after we had it. Sure, but it's yeah. like in World War Two where like everyone's trying to make this big weapon. Yeah. It's like how how do you end the war to end all wars? Yeah. You make the final weapon. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're making this big battle station. Mm-hmm. We better make it before they make it. Yeah. And just that whole idea of, like, who was making the Death Star and what reasons they were making it mm-hmm. and everything and how long it was in the process of being made. Yeah. I was like, I was not expecting it to be, one, made by the Republic during the Clone Wars, and two, to be started by the Geonosians. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. It, honestly, it kind of gave me the same feeling I had um, when you play Jedi Fallen Order for the first time and you go mm-hmm. back to Ilum, mm-hmm. and you're like... This is Star Killer Base. Sure, Star Killer Base has been under construction for this long. Yeah, and it changes a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of the same thing with the yeah. Death Star. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, yeah. we were just talking about Bad Batch, but uh-huh. Project Necromancy. Like we see the fruits, Necromancer, Necromancer. Sorry, mm. the fruits of the labor we see yeah. in Episode Nine. Yeah, but it has started back Episode Three. You know, like yeah. around that time. I know, and it's just crazy to like see like these plans that Palpatine has and how long mm-hmm. he will work on preparing all of his weapons and ways to control the galaxy. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, it makes sense though, because like project necromancer stuff probably has its inception with Darth Plagueis mm. and his obsession with creating life. Yeah. You know, and then Palpatine, you know, he's, he's always thinking in the next step. So then he's going to, okay, I'll create life and order a clone army and then i'll do this and i'll do this and i'll do this but uh it's the it's the super weapon it's the the symbol of fear that yeah. that yeah. has lasted quite some time in terms of planning yeah you i know? mean palpatine like there is a clone army ready for this war that we have just not even gotten into yet mm-hmm. <laughs> right like yeah. where this where this army come from oh well sifo diaz wanted to do it yeah. you know like he oh, saw the guy the that, yeah the guy that's always seeing visions oh he okay but <laughs> You know, like this long plan has just uh-huh. worked for it all, I guess, and he it's what he always does. Yeah. So that that was surprising to me of like Republic and mm-hmm. well, who are we gonna have build this? Uh how about Poggle and his drones? Yeah. Have them start building it. Yeah. And then Poggle rebels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I guess not rebels. He kind of was working for the separatists and then yeah. realizes what's going on and Yeah. Yeah. But um with that, I didn't know some of the stuff about uh Geonosians that are in this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, what type of things? Well, like we have the thing with the drones and like, yeah. well, if the drones aren't working, yeah. then they start thinking they want to be higher up sure. and then they'll start trying to take over. And yeah. like there was like this hierarchy but because they're got to hive- keep them working. Exactly. They're a hive mind species, right? So their wants and desires and satisfactions and hormones work very differently than more individualistic species. So mm-hmm. yeah, you want to keep them working or they'll, <laughs> you need to keep them occupied. That's why you yeah. got to have three days of games with monsters killing people, yeah. right? To, that's why they're super excited. They're like, who are these two Jedi that just showed up in our factory? I don't know, but we're going to execute them. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> no, it was just some interesting back 
lore, I guess, about Geonosians uh-huh. and uh, the you know we saw in Clone Wars where Pogba the Lesser is captured, right? Like we see mm-hmm. we see Anakin like torturing him, right? During that yeah. one uh, episode where uh, there's the, the little worms and stuff, and I think that's Poggle that Anakin's like, I'll figure this out. I right? love when Poggle's on screen. Yeah, because I love the. The, the links they go to for his voice. Like the, the sounds and yeah. the noises that they yeah. make to... I was watching Attack of the Clones on <laughs> Disney Plus the other day, and there's a... Disney Plus has the, the extras feature, mm. so you can just watch all the DVD extras on it now. Mm-hmm. It's a great part where Ben Burtt's like coming up with the voices and showing what he has, and you hear it That's in cool. full quality without anything else, and it's crazy. Really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. But I just... <laughs> you know, it's so funny. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I thought a lot of the way that they kind of put us all put this all in there mm-hmm. and kind of has it with a lot of the stuff that we've seen in Clone Wars yep. and different aspects all kind of melding together. Like mm-hmm. the beginning of it was really cool. Yeah. Um, also, the uh, shoot, uh, they make a uh, what they call it. Uh, a cell, a something, the whatever cell. It's like basically the overseeing unit of creating this Death Star, right? Yeah. I forget what it's called. I d- thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. It's like plant... <sighs> I can't remember right now. Um, but it's it's like a it's like a council, basically. Yeah. Right? Um, but they had... Uh, one of the guys that were, was a good chunk of it and like talked about different mm-hmm. aspects was Dr. Gu- Gubacher, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I was like, that name sounds familiar... But I don't know why. Okay, I, I had to look him up to see who he was. The doc. I, I didn't know if you were, do you remember who he is. I don't. I don't think. Uh, he's the uh, he's the the prawn. Prawn. I forget. Do you know the octopusy dudes? Remember the uh, remember the cube where there was like that weird octopusy yeah, down yeah. there, dude. He's one of those race. Okay, but he's the one who uh, changed up D Squad. Yeah, and like added extra things to like the KT droid and the one that was emptied out yeah. to be uh, in the sunny. Day in the Void stuff. Yeah, that for one? all of the D-Squad, like, art. Okay. Like, he was the one who that was, was like, manipulating and changing them and stuff. Dr. Uh. Gu- Gubacher, okay. I think, was the name that they, they said in the book. I didn't realize that was him. And, I, well, I had watched, uh, what is it, Kanan? He's been watching a little bit more, like, Clone Wars Clone here War and there stuff. stuff. He had been watching Avatar a lot more, yeah. but he's been watching more Clone Wars yeah. and stuff, too. But I think that might have been, I'm like, this name, I need. I had to look him up. Because I'm like, I don't know. It just sounds familiar, and I don't know who he is. So I had to look him up on, like, Wikipedia. That's sweet. But then I was like, oh, he's from D-Squad. That's cool. But he's only in that one episode. Yeah. But I was like, well, that's pretty cool. So he was involved in there just as being, really like, cool. a mad scientist kind of guy, yeah. right? So I thought it kind of fit. has nothing to do with the book, but I also saw Stephen Stanton talk about those set of episodes with D-Squad. <laughs> oh, yeah? And how the creatures they end up writing, like the ostrich things, yeah. are the creatures from the Bad Batch that just escaped. Really? In the newest episode. They're the same. Not the same, but... They're of that species. The same species? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Because really cool. whenever I saw them back, I'm like, man, we ever seen those guys before? Yeah, those I know. Like weird exactly. Guys? Those That's are what cool. I thought. I forgot about that. I was like, no, man, they're just making new models. No. Really <laughs> they weird. already had that all done. That's the advantage of having those systems continue to uh, inform the rest of the show. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, But those are like, a couple of my first thoughts that I had from like the first part yeah. of the book and stuff, Nexus too. said that he read the book before he watched Rogue oh, One. Oh, really? And uh, how disappointed he was that Lyra died so oh, so quickly. Man. Yeah, yeah, that does suck. Because I didn't she, even think about how much that would suck to have yeah. a character you love like that just done. She's such a big part of this this book, and yeah. like her in the later part of the book too, like uh-huh. really pushes Galen with yeah. some aspects and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, but they, uh, for them, they start off imprisoned, I guess, kind of right on a vault. Vault, I yeah. believe, is what it's called. V a l l t, and. Uh, What's there's uh he's I don't know basically working but imprisoned and Zerpin industry yeah, like that yeah but Zerpin. they're trying to get him to work on the separatist side right with uh what will ultimately be super weapons mm-hmm. yeah I thought uh Krennic, uh I think it's Krennic who says like we need to go and get Galen because he he you know he knows you know these crystals and stuff and mm-hmm. be really good he's talking to uh, Amada yep. uh, Amida Amida Mass Amida, Mas Amida yeah. right. Uh, talking with him, and uh, he's like, "Well, he's a pacifist. However, he he has a a, a kid on the way, yeah. and they could use that as leverage to make yeah. him work for it. So that's like his reasoning for going and saving them. Um, but uh, even kind of before, it's not before that, but like somewhere in there, there's like that backstory that they have, mm-hmm. where like they used to go to school and stuff together. Yeah, or they something. went to school and together. I thought the uh, 
the friendship chemistry was really interesting aspect that I didn't Agreed. necessarily get in the movie. Well, no, because I mean, <laughs> at that point, the friendship is broken. Yeah, right? like you get this feeling that he and Lyra and and Orson Krennic they have some type of history. History, but I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's sad, but again, it's the codependency. Mm. Like Krennic recognizes that in Galen he's like look you know it's equivalent exchange if you're going to be this good at something you're not going to you're going to be this bad at something too sure and he's bad at I guess picking his directions yeah you know like especially as a pacifist in a time of war like well what can you do that's not going to benefit war strategy Mm -hmm. you know and Krennic just knows what to say to get him to not think about it and to isolate him from his other support system Lyra yeah yeah Man. Yeah, but I like I like the the chemistry they had in yeah, the book. Too. I like the uh, it was like a charm that Krennic had um, for being such a dick. Yeah, he is because like charming. I started this book being like I hate this guy. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like he's got a charm to him in this yeah. that I think it, have you, if you get this story first before later on, I think it's much more tragic as opposed to expecting it. You I know agree. what I mean? It's like yeah. watching episodes one through three before watching episodes four, five, six. Yeah, right. Like sure. it's. It's so much more tragic. Like, no, why is he doing this? I know. What you are you doing? You don't have. You're not waiting for the axe to fall. Yeah, exactly. You don't have the expectation of what's going to be coming. I mean, so. other than just the expectation that the Clone Wars will end, sure, and the Empire will rise, right? Yeah, yeah. But the just you know, he's kind of he's playing the long game of wanting to like come out on top of mm-hmm. everything, but also there's that element of like kind of talking with friends. I liked. Uh, yeah. What was it? I think it was Galen. Who offers Krennic at one point, like kind of like we could go into business with each other? Yeah, and I was like, man, there's like, like Galen looks at him as like a friend. Like my friend got the Republic to come and save me, you yeah. know? Like, this- and he he has a hard time like saying he doesn't trust a friend. Yeah, right. Like it's it's hard for him to like he want his I don't know. It feels like his intuition is to defend mm-hmm. Orson to Lyra to Lyra. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean. No, I- that's again. That's his weakness. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's it's nice to. I mean, we're told about the uh, the relationship that Galen has with Jen, but we get to see a little bit more of that. A little bit more. Yeah. I mean, but especially like, not necessarily the guilt, but he he doesn't necessarily want to be with his family all the time. I mean, his mind is occupied elsewhere, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I think that that might feel like it takes away from his relationship with Jen, but I think it kind of enhances a little bit more because of the emotional outpour he does when you know when Jen and Saw Gerrera are finally seeing his message on Jeddah hmm. and realizing what this guy has done and how long he's done it. He's not codependent there, you know. Yeah, and he does it for the love of his daughter. It's such yeah. a powerful moment. I think this enhances all that, spices it all up. Yeah, I haven't watched the movie. I wanted to watch the movie before. Getting yeah, to talk about sure, it, but I yeah. haven't gotten to yet. But oh, I think it. One. So good. I think it probably. I mean, I already liked the movie to begin with, yeah. but having these little bits of history mm-hmm. added in. Also, I don't know if I've watched it since we did. Um, what was the Gen book we read? What was that one called? Rebel Rising. Yeah. Yeah. You like, should. I haven't watched it since that one either. You know, I think for good reason. Uh, after a first watch, a lot of people in Rogue One, especially with Saul Guerrero, will be like, "Why is he dying? Like, you can go too." But once you realize, like. Not just how crazy Saul has become and mm. how much he recognizes that his paranoia, become, his paranoia, but also he doubted Galen Erso for a long time. And that was the reason that he left Jin. I mean, you could say it's not, but I think it, I really do think it is one of the reasons that he left Jin is because he just couldn't trust her. You know, he, he and once he realized, oh, my God, I've been that broken where this person who has given up so much to just give us a chance to destroy this weapon. And I doubted him. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I think that he realizes I've gone too far and I can go no further. There's not much of me left. I will run no more. Yeah. Yeah. It, watching that stuff's just way better after probably these two books that we've covered now. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, I think both these have been really good for kind of feeding into more of the history of those characters mm-hmm. that, I mean, you get little bits of the idea, but yeah. you don't, I don't think you get as much, which is. I mean, Rebel Rising, Catalyst, and then Andor will finish up. Oh, yeah. You know, with season two, and that's going to be it. Like, having all those three under a belt and then going back into Rogue One yeah, is pretty nuts. Sure. Yeah. You're understanding Galen better, understanding mm-hmm. Jen better, understanding Cassian, Cassian better. Like Exactly. That, yeah, I like mm-hmm. that a lot. Also, when this one we got, um, 
we got when he named her Stardust. Yeah, we did. I thought it was that it was, was nice. cute because he was like looking at her eyes and her eyes had changed colors yeah. and he was like, "There's stardust in her eyes." And then yeah. that's just he just I'm like, "Okay, well, mm-hmm. that's that's cool." Because I was wondering uh, when I started, I'm like, "Okay, well the baby hasn't been born yet," mm-hmm. and I was like, "I wonder like when we get like do we get the idea of the name?" Because I yeah. you know I, we know from the the code name of the the project, right? Like, okay, stardust. Mm-hmm. But I I, uh, I thought it was a cute thing from him yeah especially i mean i've always just assumed that he was uh you know neil degrasse tyson talks about that a lot we're mm-hmm. made of stardust mm. right because all of the elements found in our body were formed in the crucible of dying stars and then exploded across the the universe and then eventually made their way here you know which is a pretty amazing thing and i just thought maybe galen being scientifically minded like he is he looks he at it that sees, way oh look what what this specific stardust has formed you know that's pretty it's that's interesting interesting idea yeah. sure but yeah um what do you think of there's i think only really one new character that we really get in this book um Haas, right Haas obit obit yeah. yeah what did you think of like, uh, Haas yeah, obit? The, the smuggler um i mean i liked i thought he was good uh i definitely liked the idea of the empire like encouraging smuggling <laughs> in places so that they can tighten security, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was an interesting character. Um, I don't have much to say about him. Yeah. I didn't have uh, a lot on him initially. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I had finished the book last week at some point, uh-huh. And then over this last week, I started trying to like re-listen to some stuff. Yeah. So I think, I think part one's a lot more fresher in my mind. Yeah, sure. Um, I really started liking him in the like towards the very end of yeah, part three, and then when I started re-listening to part one, um, his he gets shoved into this by Krennic, yeah, right? He does, um, which is like one of the, I think it's one of the first times you really see Krennic. Like I think early on you don't you just kind of see Krennic like thinking about what he wants to do and try to save Urso and the gains he can get from it, mm-hmm. but him bringing Haas into it and his lack of caring for like what it does to Haas. Yeah. I'm like that's when you first get that slimy sure. feel. I think it's what from the empire Krennic, does you know? to just the people yeah. at large. Um, but he gets he uh, he he's that middle ground smuggler where he's yeah. like, I just will smuggle for anybody. Yeah. You know, like I don't really want to take sides. And he's worried about like what the empire is going to do for this. And he kind of gets pushed into this situation. Mm-hmm. But it gives him a chance to meet Galen and uh, Lyra, yeah. and which then comes back later on for being helpful for them yeah, as well. It so does. I was like, this is. It was interesting, and I was waiting to see, like, all right, well, we have this guy, but I'm like, I really expected Saw to be involved because Saw's in the very <laughs> yeah. beginning of Rogue One, so he why is. is he not around here, you know? Yeah. Now, I thought he was going to be a little more involved in the book, honestly, but I wasn't disappointed or anything. No. Yeah. Um, but uh, going in towards, I think it's into part two mm-hmm. of the book, because um, this jumps sometimes, Yeah. right? It, oh, yeah, big um, time. You start in the Clone Wars, and then we get into getting out of the Clone Wars mm-hmm. and into like the Imperial Empire, Empire time proper, frame. Yeah. yeah, so uh, in there we start getting uh, a moment with uh, Haas, and he's working for Krennic, but also trying to like Krennic and Tarkin. Like Tarkin comes in, mm-hmm. right? And I, I love and he's got to. I love mm-hmm. the Krennic Tarkin like back and forth because you know, like you know, we you know Tarkin gets the Death Star, but it's it's Tarkin like lying in wait kind of like letting Krennic do stuff so that he can try to be like now I take it exactly. you know it's- Tarkin knows like okay even if this project <coughs> it, it succeeds it's going to have a ton of growing pains and I don't want to be at fault for them yeah so I'm going to let this guy who thinks that he's using me mm-hmm. I'm going to use him mm-hmm. and they kind of use each other to a point and then Krennic falls away yeah I thought it was uh interesting having uh Tarkin, like, he had to fight Haas and Saw and, like, yeah. this little group of, like, rebels and stuff. For and, a while. Yeah. Yeah. Just for a bit. Uh-huh. And then, like, he, you know, he he's, uh, I forget who he calls, it might be Amita, for, like, reinforcements mm-hmm. or whatever it was and being like, I need more of this. Yeah. Like, well, then just send me, you know, send me this. And yeah. he's just trying to win this battle and stuff. And he gets ruthless with it a little bit. And it does. And takes out the cliffside and stuff. And I was yes, like, this he is does. A, I mean, one, it was a good play as far as, like, mm-hmm. trying to win. Yeah. But, you know, it's just. It's just Tarkin. I don't it's know. Just it's just a Tarkin-y kind of thing. Yeah. And but he he wins and yeah. Uh, his exchange with Haas I thought was interesting, but also, um, was it in that moment? There's a moment at some point that I thought it was kind of interesting that he related. Uh, it might have been earlier on actually with 
or so. He related his Citadel experience to being yeah. captured or imprisoned or something mm-hmm. like that. And I was thinking it was with Haas, but it might have actually been uh, Galen on Vault. I, think, I, I, I can't remember now. Um, now I'm doubting it too, but yeah. he, he did mention that, yeah. But I thought it was interesting having him kind of talk about a vulnerable moment, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't feel like we often get with Tarkin. I mean, I yeah. I mean, he's a master manipulator, just Shh. like I all mean, the I others. That's true but, too. I mean, that's the best way to manipulate somebody is to make them feel like you're being vulnerable, but really you're lying in wait. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, speaking of uh, Haas, too, just before we get off of that, yeah, yeah. Did, you, did you see the message that Nexus sent about Haas? I don't think I did. Uh, he said, little funny bit of extra trivia <laughs> ahead of the Catalyst discussion. In Rogue One, one of Jin's toys is named, through the visual guide, as Lucky has a bull bit named after Haas Obit from Catalyst. Granted, oh. it looks nothing like him, but she's a kid. <laughs> sure, because Haas is like humanoid, but yeah. he's not a human. Yeah, right. Um, we know she has Stormy, which is a little stormtrooper that she has. Yeah. And one of her other toys is huh. named I didn't know that's after cool. him. So that name being around and, you know, I mean, that's what kids do, right? Like they name their toys after certain important people in their life sometimes, mm-hmm. especially at that age. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that was a cool detail. Yeah, I like that. No, uh, Haas wise, uh, I, I enjoyed him towards the end and everything too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked his trip with Lyra that yeah. he took and like was kind of showing the galaxy and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then it opened the door for like, uh, I think it was for him that they had the conversation of like, you know, if you ever want to take you know another trip, just let me know, and it could be a whole family trip and stuff. Yeah. And it, it led into the whole uh, escape, yeah, of everything too, mm-hmm. and with, where they met Saul Guerrero. Absolutely, and yeah. I, I just was like okay, I see kind of what happens here, mm-hmm. and I, I like Haas for what he's doing and how he's helping, yeah. you know, the Ursos. But uh, agreed. But yeah, originally like he didn't stand out in my mind till I got to the end, and then uh-huh. when I started re-listening to it again, I'm like, you know what? I kind of like what they do with this character. Yeah, I've every any time that I have started to mm-hmm. re-listen to a book that I finished. Like, I always get so much more out of it the second time. Yeah. I need to just try to factor I, that into my I, time. I wish I, I – I want to try to listen to the book twice before yeah. we do this, but I don't always get a chance to. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it just helps me so much more of, like, picking up more stuff. Yeah, when you're reading the first time, like, you're not understanding what's trying to hook you. You're yeah. just absorbing information and hoping that information becomes rele- more relevant as you go. Sure. But sometimes you're like, eh, this – you might be like listening to one person part like, yeah, this piece probably isn't that important. I don't need to pay attention <laughs> too much. And it's like a hit, like linchpin for the entire thing, you know? Yeah, right. And it's it's always fun to not just have an experience where an, an author is telling you a story and you're experiencing it, but the second time you get to go back and really see it being built. Yeah. And that's really fun. Yeah. And that's what's so fun about behind the scenes and all the extra Star Wars information we know about the movies and television oh yeah shows. i didn't know all that stuff the first time i did it yeah it was the later exactly. times i went through and everything too yeah. which is sometimes one of the tricky things with like you know just doing reactions in general where mm-hmm. it's like i'm trying to absorb as much as i can yeah but i don't know necessarily what's really important for in the no, future I and I mean, foreshadowing but for me so that's cool why those. that's why the reaction experience or the first time watch is such an <clears throat> important one because i mean both for the audience and for the storyteller. The storyteller needs, I mean, that's what they need to work on. Everything else is kind of like, yeah, if we make details that you can appreciate the second time, that's good. Mm-hmm. But if you don't enjoy the first one, you're not going to go to the second one. Sure. You know? Yeah. We got to get it's, you on the first. It's, uh, I mean, it's on Star Wars related, but it's like talking about uh, with Hamilton, right? Like mm-hmm. you can watch and you can enjoy it the first time, but then when you rewatch and stuff and you start being like, oh, this motif or yeah. this this line here and they they reiterate it back here and it has a kind of a different meaning and you know there's just different things that they do that you can pick up on and that's the same with most things and i think with this book too it it worked for me just getting into more of the same like getting the story a second time agreed but with that foreknowledge i guess Mm -hmm. no i I feel like just us as a like a story consuming culture has started to not appreciate your first watch as much as your others Mm -hmm. and i understand why that can happen but, you know, like you'll hear about certain people being like, oh, I hate that movie. It's like, what? I, when we talked about it, when you first saw it, you loved it. It's like, yeah, but then I thought about it more. And it's like, well, what, what, what should be more valuable, the way you felt in the moment or the way you feel now? Because in the moment is a special moment you will never get back. Sure. The, all the other ones, you're kind of repeating something. You yeah. Know? So No, I get what you mean. And uh, it seems like with books, um, you know, I just – I need to be able to either completely focus on it 
and do nothing else or I have to go into autopilot and then I'm focusing on it. But sometimes I can, on my first read through, I can miss some stuff that I oh, yeah. don't necessarily do when I'm watching it. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was the second time of Dr. Uh, Gubacher? Mm-hmm. Gubacher? I was, it was the second time listening through, and I'm like, yeah, that's I awesome. swear I know this guy. And then, like, mm-hmm. I don't even really remember the conversation as much. I feel yeah. like it kind of, like, I kind of glossed over and got the general idea of what mm-hmm. they were talking about and the idea of constructing this weapon. Yeah. And okay, yeah, I get it. But it was the second time, I'm like, wait a minute, who's this guy? What? I think I know this name. And I'm like, who is this guy? Where's he from? Uh, yeah, no, just, that's, just that's cool. If I ever do uh, a reread, I'll know that now. <laughs> yeah, it was just neat. <laughs> or if he um, pops back up somewhere. Yeah, right? That'd be cool, too. Um, I, uh, but. I know, I know we got to get into Survivor here before too long, but I also want to uh, talk about, we, I said about Lyra. Uh, one of my things I really liked with her was towards the end of the book, like they, there's a meeting with Krennic. Yeah. Right? And Galen, Galen through a lot of it, like he's always kind of on Krennic's side, right? Mm-hmm. Or making excuses, but he's also seen his own stuff. Yeah. And whenever he talks to Lyra, he's kind of like, no, it's fine. It's this or this. Mm-hmm. But then you finally get to that, towards the end of the book, and you get to that headway of like, I have my own doubts. Yeah. And she's had her doubts. Mm-hmm. And they, they have that conversation with Krennic and everything. And uh, I think my favorite thing with her was like, all right, well, why don't we leave? We're leaving tonight. It's like, what do you mean we're leaving tonight? It's like, well, I've already made plans. And he's like, well, what if I would have not been on board? It's like, uh-huh. I would have convinced you. <laughs> like, she was already like, I know we're leaving, but you just don't know we're leaving yeah. yet. Um, and then later on, uh, when they were uh, walking through the town, the city through Coruscant mm-hmm. and she's like alright we're gonna go up three levels and we're gonna take the another turbo elevator we're gonna go down two more levels and we're, <laughs> we're gonna be here and like you, <laughs> I, I thought it was funny he's like you uh, know these streets pretty well now huh yeah. it's like ah the only way to get Jen to sleep was to walk her yeah. and it's such a mom thing I think it is. but also it's, it feels like such a wife thing to be like we're leaving here's where we're going <laughs> you, we're going it's like yeah. well, what if I didn't agree yet and, and I love that he did agree and then I love that he also went over and he started like changing some stuff he's mm-hmm. like what are you doing he'll look at that and he's like I know. It's so like Galen started like <laughs> yeah. trying to like change and trick Krennic so that if he did try to follow them. And I was like, I, I just loved, I, one, I love the chemistry of the two of them, mm-hmm. but it also felt like a couple for me. It I did. don't know. Yeah, I agree. I like that part. Yeah. Um, separately from that, I also really liked the district on Coruscant <laughs> they were at. Okay. That was like, uh, it used to be like a field or something, right? And eventually it did get piled up on, but it's like the most natural part of Coruscant. Where, like, just this kind of square, and you look up and you see the city around you mm-hmm. everywhere, but just this little, like, almost, like, nature re- reserve that was reserved for nature, and then they just threw them out, <laughs> you know, and then just put, you know, it, what will ultimately be the place where research is done that destroys nature. Sure. Um, but I, just, I thought that was a cool little piece of Coruscant history with that. There. It's kind of like the uh, the rock, right? Uh-huh. The highest point of Coruscant before the buildings yeah. or whatever it was on yeah. uh, in Mandalorian. That the we Monument saw. Plaza, yeah. Yeah, like it's just mm-hmm. neat to see. Like, well, there used to be a planet, planet here, yeah. you know, but now it's just all city because mm-hmm. we've just kept on industrializing and building up. Yeah, oh, the smog must be terrible. Yeah, right. Well, that's yeah. why like the lower levels get so bad too, right? So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, there was uh, I don't I don't necessarily have uh much to say about this but i thought it was interesting that there was a and i kind of referenced it earlier but there was a conversation talking about the wonders of the galaxy yeah uh, they didn't mention what they necessarily uh-huh. were but they named off like there's like a hundred of them and they talk about like in the core and mm-hmm. the outer rim and the in the mid mid yeah. rim mm-hmm. um and i was like man i want to i'm kind of curious what all those are yeah it would be cool to watch like a tourist like or get like a tourist brochure from the galaxy vacation sure yeah like you go into that place and it has those little brochures, yeah. like all the brochure wall sure. and everything. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. It's no, like, I, I like that idea. Yeah. Like, you could theoretically, let's say you're a Rodian. Mm-hmm. Maybe your 100 wonders might be a little different than like a human's because well, your history might be a little different. So what you put value on might be different, you know? Possibly. It'd be kind of interesting. There, You know, I think of like, uh, you know, you have the, uh, what was it? The crying or talking mountain or whatever the whatever thing yep. you talked about you know like just Mount things, sorrow yeah just <laughs> things where it's like we don't really have an answer for this but this uh-huh. is like a living mountain yeah and it's a wonder of the galaxy yeah Isn't or that like weird in, in <laughs> yeah in doctor who there was an episode where like there was like the singing like plateaus or yeah. whatever they were yeah and like they didn't really have an explanation as to why they sung mm-hmm. but if when the wind blew through them there was and it that just sounds like a wonder of the galaxy you what know? do you think like of the star wars that we have consumed What's one of the wonders? What is a wonder? Yeah. 
I mean, if Mount Sorrow is real, I think that's yeah. a good one. You know, like a mountain that is like, what? What exactly? What, could it talk, or it was like could cry, or is it? Yeah, it was it, just. Uh, it could. It just. It, it could heal you with the power of friendship. Yeah, that sounds like a wonder of the galaxy. That does sound like a wonder. Um, as far as things we know in canon, um, hmm. like any time we see like a half destroyed planet, yeah. it's always awesome. And you see like the core like radiating out and the excretion disc trying to like reform into a sphere. I think that's always cool, but I imagine that's relatively common, not necessarily a wonder. You sure, for any planets that have been yeah, destroyed I mean, or something. We're gonna go into it very soon, but Jai Survivor has Tantalor. And the abyss and getting there, that's a wonder. <laughs> yeah. No, sure. I mean, that's a really good one there. Um, Maybe like Kessel. Uh, the Kessel man, I was about to jump to that just because oh, of the okay, yeah. But I was like, I was trying to think of it what it was. But yeah, where that like, that it was like, what, a black hole that the thing got sucked into? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like Zimorphia. whatever yeah. whatever that whole thing is, like that might be a wonder, but I don't know. I don't want to see that wonder. Yeah. I'll I'll continue to wonder. <laughs> I don't need the answer for that one. Seaman um, says, the great Zillow Beast of Malastare. That's a wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Kobo Abyss. Man, there used to be so many of those, yeah. too, though, and now it's just, you know, gone. Purgles, the Maw, yeah. Oh, you know, is it? was it the Eye? What was it in Andor that made all the... Uh, the, the Eye the, of... Remember the... Yep. Everyone came together and watched all the, the falling... It starts with an A, right? I don't remember. <laughs> Crap. I, I need my notes again. Yeah. But, uh, Aldani. Is it called, yeah, the Eye yeah, of Aldani? That was the, the Aldani people, the Eye of Aldo- <clears throat> Aldani. Yeah. Oh, that, what an amazing. That should be a wonder, I think, right? That's a that's 100% on the brochure. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the answer. That's the one. <laughs> um, I just oh. I just love the idea of, like, normal things, like the worship trees on Kashyyyk for Wookiees. They're probably like, huh, huh, trees, you know? Mm-hmm. But if Ray was there from Jakku, like, <laughs> how wonderful that would be to see. Yeah. What about the, uh, talking about Ray, the hole that she, like, wasn't there, like, a, a, a force hole, right, on that planet? <laughs> is that a wonder? Is it? Yeah, I sure. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Or, like, the tree on Dagobah, the is that, spot. like, a, a wonder? <laughs> you know? I don't know. I feel like those are, like, caution. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know, step <Yeah>. away. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> don't go here. Uh, maybe, though. Um, another thing in this book, too, kind of related to the wonders that uh, I don't think I've ever heard of before was mm-hmm. uh, they called uh, things like legacy planets, which yes. I kind of related to like, we have like Wayne National Forest, yeah. right? Like it's an area that's like, this is made to be protected. Like, yeah, you don't, don't build You here. don't take you don't, resources yeah, from here. Yeah. This is like a protected national forest and, yeah. pr- you know, th- th- these legacy worlds sounded to be similar to that yeah. but the empire was starting to come and it anyway. take over resources and stuff in there yeah. and i was like okay that's an interesting mm-hmm. uh, it's a word i've never heard but i started relating it to like special like you know, yellowstone national sure. park yeah. or you know something like that where it's like this is protected you don't you don't frack here mm-hmm. you don't you know you don't do any of that stuff yeah. here yeah. but the empire's like yeah we don't care yeah. <laughs> we need kyber crystals they're hard to find yeah. we're gonna go wherever we need to to get stuff which we have a new legacy world well, it's more like a moon. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything with kyber crystals that was new in this to you? Not necessarily. I mean, Galen learning to grow them. Mm-hmm. Like, we've had synthetic crystals in the EU, at the very least. Like, most red crystals used to be synthetic. Yeah. Like, the Sith would grow them. Um, there was talk about, um, I forget who said it, but someone said about, I used to always think that they were, like, living and growing and sure. like that. Yeah. And I was like, like, they call them, like, an organic crystal or something like that. And yeah. I I didn't I never heard of them being like that, yeah. but also there's such a mystery like when we see the younglings go to Ilum to get mm-hmm. them, and each one like calls to them. Yeah. But sometimes it's tricking you, and I'm like, yeah. well, it must just be the force. But I'm like, maybe it's an element of the crystals too. That there was that, that very sickening part where they're getting all these crystals at a certain size, mm-hmm. and Galen's like, you know, where would you get all these? And oh yeah, they apply like they took these off dead Jedi. They just took them out of their lightsabers. Yeah. Here you go, Galen. And it's just dark. Yeah. You know. There's also the conversation with him and Lyra talking about uh, uh, perhaps the Jedi were trying to protect the galaxy from these as like a weapon. Yeah. Like they knew the power it did have, but Galen's like, well, then, you know, they should have let us have. Or like mm-hmm. there was like an argument kind of between that. Yeah. But then I felt like later on he was like, you may have been right. The did Jedi think, may have been protecting yeah. us from this. I mean, we got a little bit of it. But I, I kind of assumed Lyra was going to be a little more spiritual than she ended up being. She had like a little bit of force sensitivity, right? Yeah. Like. I mean, she, you know, she has the Kyber necklace that she gives to Jin, mm-hmm. and she talks about, you know, uh, you know, she pretty much says, "May the Force be with you." Yeah, 
I don't know. I just thought she was more closer to like Guardian of the Will stuff than science, but yeah, it makes sense too. Sure. That could have been interesting. And then it would have been like more of a mirror to Galen, mm-hmm. I guess, than what we got. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't really remember her having like a force sensitivity thing. I, I remember that from Rogue One. So I thought like the little bits that they kind of sprinkled in this was interesting. Well, anybody can use a force iron. <clears throat> I mean, I guess. <laughs> it's just True. easier for some. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on your M count. It does. <laughs> <laughs> but I had, a, I had a good time with the book. No, I, really I, I did it. too. And I liked how it also, because it's the same <laughs> author, kind of sets up and you could kind of see like the past to Tarkin. <laughs> yeah. That was really cool too. Yeah. The Tarkin book specifically. I definitely James think Lucino. that like if you like Rogue One, mm-hmm. like you should definitely read this book and just get a little bit more yeah. history on those characters because like you don't get a lot of Galen in Rogue yeah. One really. And, um, I, I am and le- even Krennic. No, you don't. And I'm legitimately jealous of the people that got to read it and then experience the book. I, I I would like to live in a different world where that happened, and then I could like judge the two experiences, what I liked more, yeah. you know? When I found out that this book came out like a month or two before Rogue mm-hmm. One, I was like, oh, man, it could have been really cool to kind of yeah. have this knowledge before watching Rogue One. Man, and already... then having that nexus feeling of like, they killed her off real quick. Yep. <laughs> man, all right. I can remember when the Revenge of the Sith novel came out before the movie yeah and it being like at you know what bookstore would we have had then um Walton books or something i don't know shoot whatever it was old navy now yeah uh damn, whatever that place was. was but i can remember being, borders borders but i can remember like <laughs> going there and like seeing it like wow here it is and like having to like resist the urge like don't do it. Who's General Grievous? <laughs> they're, they're, you could learn anything that's bad, know. you know? You don't look at yeah. the back of the, the music. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a time. 2019. No, no, it was definitely a really a really good book. I yeah. actually like this one. Uh, I, what was the one we read last time? I think I like this more than last time, but now I can't remember what we read last time. Uh, The last thing that we read? Yeah. It was... um. Yep, yep. I just blanked. Why am I, why am I going blank? What was it called? Guys, you know. <laughs> I just took my notes out. See, I got. Let me hear. I'll just click this button. To nope, not that one. It wasn't Queen Shadow, was it? Uh, I think it, it was Lords of Sith. Test of Courage. Was it Test of Courage? Was that the last one? I think it was. Yeah, because we had Queen Shadow and Test, Test of Courage. Of Courage. Okay, us. man, it was second on my list. I should have just read that one. But I was like, no, it wasn't that. Last month was nuts for that me. That was so long ago. <laughs> but I think it was just last cause month was a blur. Oh, I had my notes. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I really, I really did enjoy this one more than I, more than I, I guess I thought I was going to. Especially starting it a second time, I yep. was like, oh man, this this stuff makes so much more sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep, fun book. So. Encourage anybody that hasn't, and for some reason, listen to all this <laughs> to, to to read the <laughs> why, book. <laughs> why, why do they do that? So no, uh, we should. Uh, I guess step on to. We have a little bit of time to talk about some Survivor stuff yes, that we've we do. postponed for like. Almost a year. Yeah. I've, it's been almost a year for Has me. Has it been a year for you? It was like April, and we're almost into March. Tomorrow well, will be March, it right? It took me a long time to finish Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, today's leap day. Today is leap day. Yeah. Huh. I had a dentist appointment this morning. Uh, I think I've gotten rid of most of my my mouth stuff, but <coughs> uh, n- that makes so much sense. So when I go into a new place, especially a crowded, like not crowded, but like an office that has a lot of machinery and stuff like that, it can be hard for me to hear. And now I realize what the dental hygienist was saying to me. Today's her birthday, and she only celebrates it every four years. <laughs> I had no idea what she was saying. I went, uh huh, because <laughs> I couldn't hear her. But uh-huh. I heard little tiny, like, four year, and I thought I heard birthday. Yeah. And I thought she was talking about, like, her four year old or something. But oh, no, no. That's what she was saying. My, my daughter has a friend, Damn. and today's her birthday, and she's like, she turns two today. That's funny. But she's eight. Yeah, she's eight. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. All right. Um, I. What did you think of the game? Thought I knew who the Jedi Survivor was. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it kept changing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did so. What was your? Hang on. Okay. <laughs> your biggest surprise of it? I have a lot of surprises. One of my, I'll talk about my first surprise. My first surprise is. Uh, like, big surprise. Because the whole yeah. thing was full of surprises. Yeah. I know my first surprise, which is probably my biggest surprise of the game. All right, we'll say it on three. One, two, three. Cordova. Cordova's alive. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, 
Nothing necessarily said he was Nothing. dead. Except that he's coded as a dead character. But I was like... He says goodbye in hollow form to his droid. And um, I remember be like being like crying and sad. Like, oh, Cordova, you're dead. Like he's the, not. The, the, and then he did. Uh, yeah, that was... I mean, I was... Uh, I didn't... I also... I guess I didn't think that that would happen because... I uh, know. I was like, well, there's no way you bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like... I was positive he was dead. And then, like, there was a, there was a scene where, like, it starts at, like, Boots, right? Yeah. And it scrolls up, and I'm like, oh, who's this guy? I'm I like, oh, Sierra. The heck is he here yeah. for? I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That was such a sweet moment. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, sweet. Like, oh, man. We could have talked to this guy. Maybe, but it was, uh, it was awesome. I was so happy. Yeah. Yeah. No. That was bigger than, like, uh, like uh, Bowden was a thing where I'm like, Oh, uh, he talked about a kid. Uh, it makes me a little worried. And I'm sure it's fine. But I, like, but I could maybe damn. see things coming. But like, I did not expect him. Like, if you told me, like, hey, what do you think is gonna happen in the second game? Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have been like, oh, was alive. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, not at all. Man, I loved Bode so much. Yeah, dude, Bode so much. Bode is a really good and tragic character in that. Man, it's- last night when we got to the end and. Kata was singing her song. I was like, damn, oh. that's sad. Yeah, and then the, the star I had the, song. And then I had the fight with Bode and all that stuff. And then I'm leaving and I find a force, a new force uh, oh, memory. Force echoes. And then it's Bode and her singing the song. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man. And then I got out to his head on her and then I found another one and I clicked it and it's Bode singing, but he changes the last line to say the name of his wife. And they talk about how when she died, he changed. Yeah. And it's so sad, and it's it's such a powerful story. Yeah, to make that your secret bad guy. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Because you think the one guy's gonna be yeah. the bad guy, right? I know. <laughs> I know. Dagon, but Dagon. I mean, yeah. Look, ten out of ten for everything that happened in, in the game. I, I absolutely love the storyline. Yeah, I did but too. I was crushed many times in the oh, storyline. Yeah. No, the story's really good. Mm-hmm. Characters are really good. Yeah. Um, Z. Uh, Z, like so, I, I had honestly <laughs> the High Republic, <laughs> you yeah. know, like I was like, Z, what? But like when I say like surprise wise, like uh-huh. those were surprising. Yeah. Like oh, this guy's still alive in yeah. a pod, and there's a droid from the yeah. High Republic and stuff, and like, I guess it was all good. Mm-hmm. But I can also kind of in a way expect that, given that we have High Republic stuff, right? Yeah. But I was positive that guy was dead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, but no, uh, uh, no, having Z there and getting High Republic like visions, yeah, right. The and Nihil, like seeing the Nihil for a second, yeah, that, <laughs> that showed cool. up. They mentioned they mentioned the Nihil at they one do. point. I forget. Yeah. I think it was in like one of the maybe documents or whatever that you the read or whatever bank stuff. Yeah, um, data bank. They also had a uh, shoot. What's his name? Uh, the snake guy, Oppo Rancius. Yeah, Rancius. R- Rancius. Yeah, yeah. He, like he's mentioned. Well, in he it was. And stuff. Yeah, he was on the the Republic or the Jedi Council. Yeah, for a very long. time. But like, yeah. But I'm like, mm-hmm. oh man, that's that's so cool. Yeah. So like, there's just there's connections to all kinds of different elements. Yeah. And I was like, this is cool to see High Republic stuff. Have like a couple names that I can kind of recognize. Yeah. Um, I have so many highs of this game. Yeah. Like the the Trident droid like attacking Jedha Temple, and. Uh, Dude. Like Marin, like you know, using her like teleportation magic to get dude. you the hell out of the, the ter- teleportation. Oh, segment is dude, so cool. that was so cool. I-, I love that a lot. Yeah. I also love um, when you're a seer, de- like defending and everything. Yeah, like the uh, the the segment of that is is crazy and sad and everything. But the way they implement it was so mm-hmm. good. And like, there's yeah. there's the element of like when uh, like the fighting Darth Vader is so cool to have. Yeah. But then when she almost wins, but doesn't, doesn't, and then she's like there in uh, Cal's arms, and it's been like a force echo that you've been like watching, right? Like that was such a cool moment to have. Like, ah, uh, it's I just know. done really well. I, I love the that. last word is Trilla. Yeah, oh, it's good stuff. No, I mean, I had no idea that we were gonna have Vader again, but mm. the way it worked, it was just flawless from in its execution because. The camera comes down, you see Seer, and then you realize, wait, I'm orienting as if I'm playing. And then you're playing. And then as you're playing, you're slowly realizing, there's only one reason that I'm playing Seer. And it's because Seer is going to, like, not going to be able to continue. That's what I felt. And then the dread just mounted and mounted and mounted until... And I kept yeah. thinking, like, they had to have brought some Inquisitors with them or something. Yeah. Well, because if you have yeah. Cal fight 
Vader, you know, it's like, well, what? <laughs> you can't win. Yeah, yeah. You know Vader has to be around, mm-hmm. so. But uh, the, the element of see her fighting and stuff, and, like, it's, like, so close yeah. to her winning and stuff. Like, it, he did not walk and, away unscathed, and it was such yeah. a good fight, and I'm glad it wasn't just, like, he just destroyed her and left, yeah. you know? And I'm going to say this. Maybe this is controversial. I'm not sure, but I think some of the best Vader choreography that has ever been done in some of the cut scenes with Seer, yeah. I don't th- think it's ever been really better. Really? Yeah. I don't remember it really right now. Yeah. But I, check out some of the cut scenes, man. Because like, watch it again. They nail, you know, Vader's, you know, center focus style. But I don't know. I, I, I just thought it was really fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I need to play again. I just, I, I was in chat with you, well, not with you, you, but like with people for uh, your stream last night. Gotcha. And uh, s- someone was saying about uh, New Game Plus. I'm like, man, I haven't played with New Game yeah. Plus, so I might have to play There's again. a New Game Plus, uh, or they said something where like every time you die, it completely randomizes your appearance. Oh, really? Well, that was kind of cool. <laughs> there's a lot of appearances like, and stuff, too. Yeah, but like there's like a setting you can do with that. Dude, I was, I don't know if chat has any idea about this but i was so mad because it was one day that i like went on to uh the playstation Mm -hmm. and i removed your poncho (laughs) and i changed your beard and hairstyle and stuff and then just left it yeah and i was like oh man i mean i watched the beginning and Uh see him be like and then like i i was there for the beginning and you just came on you're like hey guys here we go we're gonna play the game you start going i'm like well damn it what nothing's changed (laughs) like you, you didn't say like where's my stuff well, what happened was is so often before I'm starting a stream or I have the countdown, I'm like, you know, I'm getting my setup ready, I'm getting my drink ready, I'm taking my shoes off, and I'll have the game up, and I'm like, all right, do I, what am I going to wear today? I, I I do that. When I played Tears of the Kingdom, I did the same thing. What is Link wearing today? I changed my outfit up a little bit. I got to, you know. So when I did that and opened it up, I just, in my head, I didn't even think about it. I just assumed that I'm a bad gamer and I hit the wrong button at some point. <laughs> The last time oh, I Oh, dang, I messed up my beard. So I just fixed it real quick. Didn't even think about it. It wasn't even a, an iota on my brain that you had messed with me. Yeah. So I don't know if that's good for me or bad for you, but yeah. it ultimately ended in nothing. It was surely <laughs> after you got your, your uh, poncho. I was like, I'm getting rid of this poncho. Uh-huh. Like, good, he's wearing it. I'm going to make him wear this one. <laughs> I don't always wear the poncho. Then, didn't care. I'm like, dang it. And yeah. then, like, I thought at least, like, I'll change the beard, too. He'll yeah. surely notice the beard's gone. Yeah. But nope. then it was all there, and you didn't say Well, because sometimes my beard would just be gone. <laughs> that was like one of the <laughs> consistent glitches where I'd be looking at Cal, and he has like no, mus- no mustache and just a beard. I'm like, ah! Yeah. And the beard's like floating over here. I, I had a couple still glitches in the game. Gotcha. Uh, nothing like game-breaking or anything. I had heard some people had like a glitch where they just couldn't finish the bounty hunts. Yeah. That and, was the big worry of yeah. mine was that people were like, oh, there's a glitch where you yeah. can't do all the bounty hunts. I'm like, what? No! I had a glitch where I couldn't select the third line in the bounty hunt screen. Oh, okay. Which was really strange. That's weird, yeah. Yeah. Man, it would have sucked not to be able to finish the bounties, too. Because uh-huh. the end was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I had a hard time with Cage. Yeah? It was pro- Cage, other than like the you know the Ogdos and some of the other big creatures that are hard to anticipate, yeah. Like I had probably the hardest time with Cage. When I'm fighting like lightsaber wielders, it's just it feels a lot easier for me just because like I'm – really paying attention to their shoulders and their feet and stuff. And mm. you can, you do that, you can kind of anticipate when to start blocking, you mm. know? But some of the creatures in a cage was nuts with her moveset. Just, just flying around, yeah. throwing like, grenades. She throw a grenade and it blows up, like, in your face immediately, yeah. you know? So no, I, I was fight. really tested with cage. I think it took me, like, it probably took me 10, 12 tries to beat her. Yeah. Yeah. I think the f- first time I had to fight, um, I, I don't know what all you've done because there's a side boss. First time I had to yeah. do this one boss, like I like I'm not going back. I'm fighting it here, okay. and it probably took me like 50 tries. Okay, on like one boss, but I sure. I also played. You played on uh, night, right? I played on master. I right, think. I played. Jedi I think night. I played on master. Yeah. Every game I play, especially the first time, I play normal. Mm. I don't. I never go easy, but I never go hard either. Because once I start being like, oh, I can do, I can do hard, and then I'm not having a good time. Gotcha. <laughs> but, but there the, were a couple times where I'm like, this boss probably should have been easier for me and this boss should have been harder for me yeah so maybe i could have done like some like kind of like dynamic thing but sure i just remove all that from myself i i i, I have nothing to prove <laughs> and everything to lose so i just do normal <laughs> but the uh the end is really cool you fight cage and then yeah. there's like bounty on cage's head i know which needs to be claimed uh, yeah i mean cage gets sh- shot yeah like i just had no idea yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's surprising isn't it's it? so surprising like 
Bobo comes down on yeah. his, like, with his jetpack, right? Uh-huh. I think. It's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, he, he like, came down on the jetpack because like, I saw his. And you're like, <gasps> yeah, like <laughs> only this guy wears those pants. <laughs> yeah, right? And you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. No. That is background extra pants that we now have to have in this design. Yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, it was uh, Tamir Morrison, right? I believe that did the voice for him, too. Yeah, it was 100%. Which was great. Tim. Yep. I was like, oh, that's so yep. cool. Uh, I guess I maybe there's a slight disappointment in that when Ravis first came in. Oh, the Gendai? Yeah. And, well, <laughs> so Ravis shows up, and I'm like, wow. And he has this kind of like, uh, it's outside the saloon, right? Yeah. And you fight, yeah. like, one of his Bedlam Raiders, and then yeah. he's like, uh, and he kind of has almost like a respectful exit from there. I'm like, that's interesting. I wonder what that, he's probably going to be a, you know, a good, a good dude at a certain point. <laughs> and then, like, his data bank showed up. So, like, I always read the data bank. I clicked it, and it said, Ravis, the Gendai. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> so, I preface that by saying, I thought he was going to last in the story a little bit longer. Oh, okay. He kind of, for me, at the very least, he kind of came and went. Like, once I got to the boss battle, I'm like, oh, my God, there's so many things you could do with this character. And they did some stuff, but maybe it's because I was Jedi Knight difficulty. Hmm. And I, he, you know, it, it seemed like an easy fight for me. And that was a disappointment. Oh, you beat him pretty easily? I beat him pretty easily. I don't think I ever... I think I took two tries to beat him. I think most fights, were for me, were somewhat difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, his fight was fun. It was a lot of fun. <clears throat> yeah, Dagon fight. Also, was a Dagon. Lot of fun. Yeah, I was gonna say because he does that mind stuff with yeah. you. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but no. Uh, that's another thing too. Is like I don't. I didn't realize he was a Gendai mm-hmm. until like reading that. So yeah, like, yeah, I, me, yeah, part of me like I and I read I think like every mm-hmm. data bank thing too. But the uh, I think it might have also been cool to if I would have not had that pop up or I wouldn't have read it. I wonder when I would have realized, realized. what he was. Because I never saw Dirge's face. I don't know what Gendai looked like. Yeah, right? But like when he starts shooting his warmy mm-hmm. arms at you and stuff, right? And <laughs> doing yeah. the things he does, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, what is this? Yeah. But I started kind of expecting it after watching the, the micro series, too. Yeah, I just, I love, cool. I love how dynamic the everything was. Like mm-hmm. the village that you're in, like oh, turning into a town. And Do every you, time I would come and visit, I would talk with everybody. Everyone in the saloon, right? Yeah, it'd take me a half hour, but yep. I love it. Yep. I just love how detailed and all that stuff was. I mean, you I know that DJ I, going. I know probably a lot of people kind of got the game solid in their mind because of glitches and yeah. its opening was not great and all that stuff. So I'm satisfied and happy that I waited so long, maybe. <laughs> sure. No, I get what you mean. <laughs> that didn't happen to me because Calvin, if he started, yeah, he'd break the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does usually. Yeah. Uh, we also got a chance to go to Jetta, which was really cool. Yeah, very um, cool. And seeing the uh, thing, what they called? Anchorites? The Anchorites. Is that right? Uh-huh. Um, and like they're like rebuilding of the library. Yeah, I'm like, it's, oh, yeah it's so, so cool, cool to see like the images of the Jedi archive there, and uh, the hidden path. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's from Obi Wan Kenobi, which apparently like those came out really close together. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Um, no, I'm I'm hoping like there's gonna be a lot more connections between that kind of stuff agreed. too. But also like we we go to Tantalor, which has connections in the High Republic that they're finding, but it's yep. hard to get to. It is. And I'm like, I wonder like now that we get here, what kind of future this could be too and like i mean it could, could be completely you, isolation could the path lead here yeah. to save people that maybe still exist yeah. later into the the series and the mm-hmm. franchise you know like there's just a lot of options with that idea yeah you i know? mean it Cal could, could show up after episode six because he's been hiding off in tantalor you know he could he could joy join ray's new jedi order yeah he maybe he'd be a much older yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> much older than uh You'd be close you, to Ahsoka's age. Cal's right? another person you could put in between episodes three and four, like I was talking about with like Glover and mm-hmm. you know doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, but uh, I love Cal. Yeah, uh, his story. I mean, the the darkness in in him here, dude. Yeah. That okay? So yeah. b- a long a long time ago, we talked about our favorite. Not a long time ago. It was like three months ago. Talked about yeah. our favorite moments of the year. Yeah, twenty twenty three. Like, one of my favorite was a moment from Survivor, but okay. I couldn't talk about it because you hadn't played the dang well, game. Well, now you can talk but about it. I love the moment. Like you, uh, Bode has betrayed you, right? Yeah. And it's oh damn, I hate this. And uh, you go and you like get to that uh, like asteroid moon yep. whatever place right mm-hmm. the the imperial like facility that you go mm-hmm. to um, the moment of like going and you meet Bode there and then you got to chase him and you unleash your dark side yeah. energy thing it was such a cool moment and you're like just crushing yeah. like droids and stuff and you're that- so strong. And you're starting to take things out like in one hit, and you start feeling overconfident. And when you don't have it, you start playing dumb, and you start like <laughs> being a little too overconfident, and you die. Yeah. And I think that 
is so on point for a dark sider. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Your your uh, overconfidence is your weakness. Right? Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly that. But, but no, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, there's so many things that I loved in the story and stuff. Yeah. But that, as far as like a gaming experience moment, yeah. was so cool. It's just Cal has lost so much. He gives people chances, mm. and they keep disappointing him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he like, gets Bode a chance at the end, right? So many. Like chances. he thinks about the daughter and stuff, and is like, let's try to get him to surrender. I mean, Bode just got Bode. He, oh man, like he Bode broken away. Cal hadn't at ha- that point. Yeah, yeah. But I think Cal has. I think he has broken a bit. And I love that scene at the end with the three pyres and yeah, and like the the time the time lapse one they do where he's Cal like just there. standing there not yeah. moving. And that, see, and that one I think teared me up. Seer just, walks out like after everybody's already gone and stuff. It's so good, but yeah, like it does make you kind of fear. Like you know, Cal decides, hey, we cannot rebuild the Jedi Order. We're gonna put targets on these kids' backs. Like I've seen it; they're gonna all die. I can't be responsible for them. And now. After losing so much, he's now responsible for a young, what I'm going to assume might be a Force-sensitive little girl. I mean, it's very possible, yeah. And now, like, you know, I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Bode kept saying, like, are you going to keep her safe from the Empire? That's exactly what Cal said he couldn't do <laughs> mm-hmm. in the first game. Mm-hmm. And now he has to do it while being forever will it dominate your destiny. Like, you, once you start touching that dark path, it gets easier and easier and easier. And now he's going to be a mentor. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, Bode's story with that is just so sad. And like, it's I understand yeah. I understand elements of it too. Like, mm-hmm. I understand him, and I also hate him for his decisions yeah. with it too. Like, too. he has that one line. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is. He has some kind of line where he's like, "It's it's on- only I can decide what's good for my daughter," kind of thing. And he he refuses to even listen to her. Yeah. I and I, That's I, I, I hate it so much, but also yeah. like I kind of understand because he's he's scared for her. He's lost his wife, you know. Mm-hmm. Like there's been a lot of tragedy in his own life, yeah. and he's been doing so much to try to protect his daughter that he gets blinded by protecting his daughter too. And I understand I mean, it. He does what it. Anakin does. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah, he loves her so much that he becomes a she becomes a possession. Yeah, and Seer, you know that final line when she comes in, like Nexus says it, like guide her through the darkness. Like she waits after all of that time during the funeral to not say, Hey Cal, here's what, here's what you can do for you. It's here's what you can do for the next generation, which Seer did for Cal, which Jaro did for Cal. And he's got to do it for another. And it's great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, imagine being like in a way, like you have a dad who's a Jedi and a mom who's a, Night Witch. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Oh. Marin Marin and, is so cool in this game, right? Marin is so cool in this game, it makes me hate that book more. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's got to go through that to get to this. Eric. I know, I know, I know. You know? But, like, I love you Marin get Marin so game. late in, like, the first game uh-huh. that I'm glad that you get so much more with yeah. her in this game. I just love how much she can challenge Cal, and it comes from a place of love, not yeah. from a place of, like, uh, aggression. Yeah. But it's still a challenge. Yeah. You know? It's so cool. <sighs> like, it's just so, I, I mean, the, 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 there's some cool, and I don't think they get to use it enough in the game, mm-hmm. really, but the dynamics of fighting with a partner, yeah. like you get, you get Marin sometimes, you get Bode sometimes, yeah. but it's, I feel like it's not there in a lot. Like, it's not a lot. A lot I certainly needed to use it more than I did. Though I will say, that actually is a thing that worked for me that I thought wasn't going to, because I kept thinking in my head, I was like, should Bode be this good against these opponents? Like, he's helping with Dagon, right? He's there at the Dagon fight, and yeah. he's in there, like, with it. I kept thinking, like, man, I don't know if he should be this good. Maybe the game's, like, you know, not doing the power scaling as much. Mm. But it turns out, when it actually happens and it turns, I'm how, going, like... How shocked were you with the, the <laughs> lightsaber pulling out? Because, like, it's like, oh, he betrayed us. I knew this right. was going to come. I talked about his push. daughter and stuff. Yeah, the Force push. That's what it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and, that, again... Jedi survivor. Who sure. are we talking about? Is yeah. it Cal? Is it Cordova? Is it Seer? Yeah. Is it Bode? Is it Trilla? Is it Trilla? Is it Kata? Is it Z? <laughs> yeah. No. Is it a lot of things? But no. I mean, in Fallen Order and stuff too. Like just, just all of them. Like there's so much in this of yeah. like here's all these Jedi's who have survived, mm-hmm. and they're trying to like yeah. move on, but all of them do it different ways, right? Yeah. Trilla joins the Inquisitors. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
maybe not not by choice, but yeah, that's where she and she survives because of it, right? Yeah. Bode does what he does in hiding, but then working for the Imperial that he used to work with during the Clone Wars, the Clone I believe, War, right? Yeah. Like all of them start taking these different routes, mm-hmm. and they're all surviving. Yeah, but yeah, it's I don't know, it, it's it's a really good story. Yeah, I'm excited for the next game. And what, what do they, you think what the next game is called? We were talking about this last night. I gave you mine. You gave me mine. You- I can give you mine. Oh, I came up because like it seems like Cal's going to be forced into that mentor relationship. Star Wars Jedi Master. <laughs> Jedi Master. Because Cal is. I'm a Jedi Master at that point, right? If he's teaching the sure, next generation. Yeah. I thought that'd be I kind mean, of fun. You could also just call it Jedi Knight. You could. You know? It's taken. Is it? By yeah. Dark uh, Forces. Ka- Kyle. Kyle Katarn. Uh, Dark Forces, I think, was it yesterday that had uh, its new, not new, but a re-release? Oh, did it? I think so. Um, I, I need to, I want to play Battlefront 2. Yeah. Um, hmm. What's a good name for a Jedi? It's got to be Jedi, right? That's the thing. It's the Jedi series. Yeah, Star right? Wars Jedi colon is what it's been so far. So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and then oh, Star Wars Jedi. Jedi Survivor. I mean, what what I would love to have it be is Star Wars Jedi The Path. The Path? That would be pretty good. Because, like, I think you could have different meanings, yeah. but also, like, they talk about The Path. I'd love to get mm. more information on that, you know? Yeah. Like, Quinlan, where where's yeah. he at? Is he, does he, is, you know, does he end up, with Cal, mm-hmm. like where does that path lead? And yeah. I think Tantalor is a great place for the path to go. Yeah. But mm-hmm. like, it could also be like, what's Cal's path or what's anybody's mm-hmm. path, right? Yeah, like that might be a cool name. Uh, I w- we would be remiss not also not to mention some of the just fantastic side characters that this had. Oh. I mean, I loved like almost every new alien design that we got, but I sure. especially want to shout out Turgle. Turgle, okay, yeah, and Scuba, Scuba Steve, yeah, Scuba, <laughs> Scuba Stev was uh, was great, and I love. Did you finish all the stories? Uh, no, no, not yet. Did he? Man, I've gotten There's... to when Captain Wet, uh, <laughs> like they betrayed him and then he marooned him and then you find him again. Have you met him a lot? Yeah. Okay, so you've probably uh, there's a point at some point where like he doesn't name them, but he kind of mentions like Pergil. Oh, a hundred percent. Okay, yeah, we've got that. Okay. Like, yeah, the space whale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh man, no, I, I, I love little Pergo mention yeah. and stuff. Dude. I, uh, I, I love just any time you just in the distance, like it's Scuba. Yeah, right. Uh, and then every time he's like, that to be the rest of my story at a later time. Yeah. No, no, no. His story is great, and it's one of those things too. It's like I'm sure there's some truth, but is it all truth? You know, yeah. like it's like that fisherman tale, mm-hmm. right? How big was the fish? You know, like <laughs> sure. I feel like a lot of his stories are kind of like that yeah. too, where I'm like, can I believe everything he's saying? But it's a fun story either way, mm-hmm. and I I enjoyed listening. Like yeah. I, I, I gotta listen. Sorry guys, I'm listening. Yeah, and I mean, I think it goes without saying, but just the voice cast just brought it. Every single one of them. Sure. The Gre- uh, grease, you know, like yeah. just uh, there's so much emotion, Dude, especially in his after voice. Jetta. You know, yeah. like he, j- his mood is just yeah. different afterwards, you know? know? Um, no, there's, uh, I like th- that. I liked, uh, I like Cage. Yeah. Right. I love Cage. Um, there's, uh, I don't remember their name. There was a, a couple. They weren't a couple, couple. There was a couple too. There's, um, yeah, the Claude and the one bearded guy <laughs> that, like, are, are a couple that, yeah. like, are beside the cantina. Those guys are a couple. Well, yeah, there's them too. <laughs> no, no it, you inside mean the, uh, there's like this there's yeah. this guy and this girl, uh-huh. right? And uh, I don't know. Do you, what do you know about them? <laughs> guy and a girl. I'm trying yeah. to remember. I think he's an older guy. I can't remember what it is, yeah. man. Oh. No, not Mosey. Uh, I can't remember I like what the Mosey. names are. Mosey is pretty cool too. <laughs> and just like I know. jacked. Yeah, I have like Mosey. Um, Man, I can't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to say too much because I, I don't know who's in I still have some rumors to finish. Too. And I'm going to be finishing up. Almost everything on Monday. Dana and Gok? That might be them. Yeah. Dana and something. But they just they usually sit at a table together. Yeah. And like when you talk, they both and they, they do like yeah, the exploration one alien and stuff. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The mm-hmm. the stories you get from them and stuff when they you come back stuff. I think is interesting too. Mm-hmm. Um but special shout out to the one prospector that blew out his eardrums. <laughs> I lo- love that guy. I don't remember that. Oh, did you catch that one? I don't remember that. <laughs> it's uh the dude from Critical Role. <laughs> And he, he's like, yeah, I uh, found one of those mines uh, out there uh, that way. Uh, you should go check it out. <laughs> yeah, but he's blown his eardrums. Sounds like Sam Regal. It's Sam Regal, yeah, yeah. That's I funny. I really like that, too. Um, oh, that's a good point, too. Uh, I, I didn't watch. I need to watch your reaction to uh, Rick. 
And you, you should check out mine too, probably. I don't I know. Will. I, I'd be interested. Like, I want to. I, I loved it so much because of the music. It's like, Rosie, Rosie. And then I just picked him up the first on, over the edge. And it goes, Did you? <laughs> I want to see what happened with yours because mine was kind of uh, in a similar state. Yeah. Stand. Like, I was just like standing there and waiting. I'm like, okay, what's going to happen? What's yeah. this guy doing? And he took a swing at me. And I went, Hoo! and I dodged. <laughs> and then, like, I, he was on the other side of me. Yeah. Then, and I was just like, that's one of the most <laughs> ridiculous things I've ever seen a game developer put in a game like that. Yeah. Like this can treat it completely as a just a complete joke because like it has that really long corridor and you can just see him yeah. like down there. And I'm like, is that just a scout trooper? Like you okay, I bet you there are two scout troopers hiding and they're sure. gonna pop out and try to get me. Yeah. So I'm like slowly walking up, you know, waiting, and then it's just Rick, the door technician. I'm like, Huh? <laughs> and he's like, Oh and I just went um. <laughs> that's all that happened. No, it's it's a really funny and moment. And apparently, stuff. yeah, I saw this. He's voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. <laughs> That's great. I didn't mission. know that then. Yeah. Uh, man, there's so much There's so much more to talk about this game. Yeah, there is. Yeah. We, could, we could probably do a podcast just on I Jedi so. in the future yeah. at some point. But uh, I, I did talk about, maybe we'll do it, but I was like, it'd be cool to have like a, maybe a video we do that compares like our either reactions yeah, or fights or be cool. different elements mm-hmm. like in either one video or some kind of highlight for yeah. it or something like that so maybe we'll have that worked on in the future or yeah. something but uh the only like things that i would want to change for the next game is like personally i didn't like being limited to two stances oh yeah like i don't know understand why we don't have but just let's have all five stances um i i feel like it's uh if i mean if you play Jedi Survivor and Fallen Order are kind of Dark Souls like, yeah, sure. right? Um, in those games, you pick like weapons to carry. Yeah. Um, and I felt like that was the idea of these. Like, you choose these weapons to take with you. I get you. Um, but so, like, I'll- you can only carry so much in those games. I feel like it's just that way of kind of limiting it to. Okay, like, so it's just a gameplay choice. I mean, that doesn't necessarily translate because everything I need for everything else is already on me. Like what? <laughs> you know, like Cal always has his blaster. And his lightsaber always can turn to two, and it can go into a double, and it can have the prongs come out. Like, there's nothing that he isn't already carrying at all times. Sure. So I personally was like, just let me do all five. I guess so. We'll because hop- what, it, what ended up happening for me, and I will do a replay, but what ended up happening for me is, like, I would get in situations where I'm like, dang it, I need my double blade lightsaber. I'm the best at it, you know? So I would just wouldn't experiment with some of the others. Oh, so okay. I, when I replay, I'm going to do, like, just cross guard and blaster stance. Oh, you know, I like used the blaster stance, but I loved it because of the range. Yeah. And there's a really cool like uh, parry, I suppose it is. Okay. With the blaster where he's kind of like, yeah, and you just nah, like, yeah. blast him and stuff. I loved all the blaster um, stuff. I just I didn't love the the one handed style, like ra- rapier style mm. uh, while using it. I typically for me fought with the dual wielding mm-hmm. because I just love the mechanics of it so much more. Yeah. Um, And then use, that's the one I play with the least. I think use the blaster stance because that was like, this is like my range a little yeah. bit more. I use that for range and kind of keeping them at bay. And then when I get in there, I pull out both blades. Sure. No dual wielding just for me. <laughs> it's a really dumb reason, but it just was too apparent that Cal was holding his lightsaber was too low. Yeah. <laughs> That damn commercial with Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill taught him to hold it too low. I mean, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> one. That's true. Two, uh, either blame his master or the fact that his master died when he was like seven <laughs> and didn't get to teach him enough. <laughs> well, his master had a double blade lightsaber, right? Jar to Paul. Yeah, so that's why you use that one so much, yeah, right? I think so. Yeah, I just, Dude, I, I personally like. I put so much uh, emphasis on like silhouettes, so, be- so that's why I went poncho, double blade, lightsaber a lot of the times because that's kind of what I think of when I think of Cal. Oh, I like so many of the other clothing options. I so use much a lot more. of them too, like but, so much. Yeah, uh, no, I, might, I, I, might play- I, I wish the game was a little more optimized for the poncho. There was a couple of times in the cutscenes where like it's like going through hands and clipping out, and I was yeah. like, ah, that sucks. Yeah, but, no, I didn't use the poncho. Mm-hmm. I got it after fighting a boss, I think it was, yeah. and I was like. This was not worth it. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you were probably the other way. Like, yes. <laughs> um, did you end up, I, I like the uh, customization for the saber and stuff. Yeah. But did you end up doing much with your blaster then because of not, uh, really, no, I not really using it? Uh, I mean, at a certain point, I stopped using it, so I stopped customizing it. But when I was using it, I tried to make sure it looked nice. Gotcha. Looked like something that I would use or I thought Cal would use. Um, I certainly... I meant to do it after Seer passed. Like, I was going to incorporate 
her lightsaber a little mm. more into the design so that I could have like both of my masters sure. and a little bit of cal in there. Especially if you're using double bladed. Absolutely, yeah. Or well, dual wielding. Yeah. Yeah, true. But I never really got that far. Gotcha. So and then there was that fantastic moment at the end where Sears lightsaber like falls. So Yeah. Yeah. No, some really good stuff. And uh uh, what's a question here? Aaron, how do you feel about Eric one-shotting the Rancor you loved? Uh, well, uh, he should play on a harder difficulty. <laughs> I, again, I have nothing to prove. <laughs> so, I think it's, uh, I, I think the Rancor is a, uh, I think the Rancor was a tough fight. And I think Ogda was a tough fight, too. But, like, I definitely wanted to, like, usually I play these games a lot being, like, I want the story, but also, like, I know I want a little more challenge yeah. than, like, some of the easier ones. Like, there's a story mode. Sure. But for me, I probably won't ever play story mode just because, yeah. like, I want it to be a little difficult. Mm -hmm. I might play story mode if we go through the game together like we did Fallen Order. Yeah. And that way we can, like, because the one thing that was more fun than that that I didn't get to do, I mean, I did it, I'm sure, but, like, spending a lot more time looking at the environment. Yeah, And, definitely. like, there was a, um, there's a senator in the very beginning, and you go on a ship. The Powan <clears> one, yeah. And, uh when you're looking at all his artifacts that are in there, there's a point when uh, w the sword that we saw in Fallen Order, which mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't remember this, but there's like a pedestal in Fallen Order on uh, Dathomir that has like this kind of, uh, I don't know, it's like a almost ritual looking thing. There's like okay. this, this blade and there's like a book, I think, and a pedestal. That same blade is on his ship. On his ship. And I was like, oh, okay. that's that from Dathomir. Interesting. That's, I mean, it might yeah. not be the exact same sure. blade per se, but it's like that style Yeah, he of had some Zepho stuff yeah. in his hallway, and there was it looked like almost like a Grievous skull thing. Yeah, but like uh, when we went through and we're like, man, look at all these clone yeah. trooper helmets or these yeah. you know, bla uh, battle droids Did you see stuff? Anakin's speeder on Coruscant? Yeah. <laughs> that was the awesome. Yellow speeder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, it'd be cool to go through and play, and maybe there's Easter eggs that we missed that we didn't get to see Oh, I'm sure there's a bunch, something. and maybe I'll see some of them on Monday. Yeah. Did yeah. you... Have you seen any, what are they called? Have you seen any Easter eggs about like Mogu? Are they like the Wampa things? The Wampas? Yeah. Yeah. Have you, you mean, seen any Easter eggs any about Easter them? eggs involving um, uh, Mogus? I, I mean, other than just cutting off their arms. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Maybe I have. I have forgotten, but I don't I think I mean, so. maybe you'll finish when you do like rumors maybe and all that yeah, stuff on Monday and whatnot. On but Monday. There's a, there's a couple things. I think it was like chat, like, hey, make sure you do this stuff. Okay. So that's gotcha. why I'm like, make sure you do some side things and stuff because there's some yeah. fun stuff that you can find and do and see. Yeah. No, I kind of plan to this weekend uh, just go around and maybe collect some of the like smaller like scrolls and like like shards of rock and stuff. Just, you know, because sure. I have those on my map now. And then on Monday, I'm going to do rumors <laughs> and uh, some of like the bigger chests and stuff like that. But primarily Kobo. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone said, did you guys see the, did you get the Rancor Easter egg? The Rancor Easter egg? Yeah. Uh, are you talking about the bone? I imagine that's what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, as soon as I saw, cause I saw the bone and then the Rancor came out. And when I saw the bone, I was thinking Rancor. Mm. So as soon as it came out and then uh, had and like, actually that was the second Rancor maybe, I don't know. But as soon as it came out, I picked up that bone and I threw it in its mouth and it, <laughs> oh, that was your second Rancor thing? I think it might have That been, was my yeah. first one. Was that your but first one? But it was one? also, like, earlier on in the game for me. Yeah. No, I missed that one when I was getting to the village. Yeah. So I met the second Rancor first, and then I was sweeping through Kobo and met the first one. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But no, like, there's, like, that little blue outline for the bone. I'm like, wait. Yeah. Well, how, what do I do? Yeah. How do I do this? Like, I got to do this. Yeah, and, that was cool. Oh, that got so cool. Yeah. I loved it. Great. Great, great. Great, great. But we'll have to talk about more. Maybe, like I said, maybe we can do a stream sometime in the future, play yeah. through it together, just talk about what's going on while we do it. Absolutely. It was fun, and I look forward to that. And I yeah. look forward to the next game. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. All right. Well, I think that's it, guys, for the podcast for this Badonka Gonk. Uh, the next Badonka Gonk is going to be on March, March 28th. Yeah, is what we decided. March twenty eighth. That's right. And we have a new book, so a new book for you to read, or if you have already read it to reread, maybe the book is going to be Battlefront Twilight Company by Ooh. Alexander Freed. That sounds cool. Yeah, dude, I might have played Battlefront while we while. <laughs> yeah, well, is, you mean the old Battlefront? Because remember yeah. that one's coming out again. Yeah, I want to play that. I kind of want to check that out. Yeah, it has yeah. like sixty four player online. It like, does. That'd be so much and fun. And it has the Saz Ventress and Kit Fisto in it. We might have As to new play that on play mm -hmm. that on like a stream or something. That'd be fun to do. Yeah. Um, but no, this is I believe tied to the newer Battlefront, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like what Inferno Squad. So, yeah, 
All right. Well, guys, that will be uh, our next one. So make sure you guys uh, read that, check that out, or uh, just join us when we talk about it March 28th, as well as uh, probably some more Bad Batch. We'll see where we're at mm-hmm. with that then. We'll see. And uh, whatever else we have for Star Wars. So, Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed this badonkagonk. Sorry we had that weird glitch in the middle yeah, of it all. I don't know what that all. was about. Um, but uh, hopefully we won't have that next time. You guys have a good night and a good weekend.